All right, everyone, welcome back for another week, the final week of East Oaks to East October. Look at that, I can never get it right, even on the final week. So, uh, make sure uh, all the volume is on. Volume's on, but the screen's black. Mm-hmm. There we go. All right, everyone. All right, here we go. For some reason, everything wasn't working. All right, we're, we're back. Welcome back to another episode of East Oaktober. Last week, I can't believe it's already on week four. I know. That's something, something. So we are here. I have a very special guest today, everyone. This is my very dear friend, a local painter here in Raleigh, and also has been a great life mentor for me. His name is Gary Bradley. If you could just step over two seconds and just wave at everybody. And he uh, is a landscape painter, and he sells his work down in Charleston, South Carolina, and I couldn't be more happy about having him on today. So today, we I must explain, because I think we call this, title this, Stool of Shame. Oh. So I'm going, <laughs> <laughs> so really excited about this. Where most, a lot of people when they're first starting to paint um, tend to get too close to their painting. Now, there are professionals out there that actually paint extremely close to, uh, to their paintings, such as people like Carlo Russo. He paints very, very close to his work. So there's nothing wrong with it. But one of the issues that a lot of people have a problem with is stepping back. So this is going to allow for you to get a better big picture of your setup and for you to learn control from painting at a distance. So uh, in the spirit of this, we are calling this a stool of shame because we used to have a stool that we'd put in front of people that was something to help them, force them to stay backward. And over time, it ended up coining the phrase uh, stool of shame because it made them feel like, oh, I need to have this crutch. But in reality, it is a great way to create some training wheels for you to put something like a chair or maybe it's your TV tray or tabaret that you use, putting that in front of your easel to help you gain distance. So today, I'm going to be painting a live setup of flowers some beautiful roses, and then Gary is gonna be painting from a reference image of a landscape that he uh, saw in Maine, is that right? In Maine, yeah. Oh, awesome. So um, we'll have those, I uh, mm. have a live feed on the roses, and we have Gary's image up so you know what he's painting from. He's also gonna work on selecting <clears throat> different things that are in the landscape that he wants to keep or change the composition slightly in order to uh, create maybe a stronger composition. So, and we'll just be talking through all of that. But uh, I'm gonna put, start putting out my paint and Gary's already got his out and he's ready to rock and roll. And uh, please tell us where you're from, what's going on. Looking forward to talking with y'all and uh, all of the normal regulars. So great to have you back. So glad you're joining us and come with some questions, even if you got some jokes. Bring those, your, bring those our way, we love hearing them. All right, without further ado, we're gonna get started. Um, so Gary, uh, tell us a little bit about how you got started being a painter here in Raleigh. Well, Did it start before you were in Raleigh? I uh, started here, yeah. Uh, a number of years ago, I was at a job, I was working and the job was filled with pressure. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Filled with pressure, like most people's jobs uh -huh. often. Yep. And um, so my wife and I went away. We rented a cabin up on uh, Lake Gaston, just north of the city. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were there for two weeks. And I decided going up, I said, I think I'm going to learn to paint. I like learning new things. 
even if I don't anticipate going very far with it, it was just I like to learn stuff. Mm -hmm. And so I went to uh, one of those stores, like a, where do you buy the worst possible art supplies? It's <laughs> like like a like a Michaels or something. Yeah, Michaels. That's what it was. Sorry, Michaels. Sorry, didn't even say that. <laughs> but, um, anyway, it's okay. I, I don't think they're watching. I didn't. I really didn't know anything, but I decided I'd be a watercolor painter because that looked really simple. And uh, <laughs> and I bought some the worst paper and the worst paint and the worst single brush. I didn't want to spend a lot of money. And um, and I and the first day we sat on the dock and I had a photograph of the the farmhouse I grew up in, and, and there was a picture of a window on the, the, on the side of the farmhouse, and I, somehow or another the window just sort of caught my eye. It just seemed to sit well, and uh, so I had a glass of beer and a glass of water to clean my brushes in, and two hours later I painted my first watercolor. It's kind of kind of looked like a window. <laughs> Wasn't a cow. <laughs> and, uh, and I went to... I said, well, maybe I'll have a glass of my beer because I've been so focused. And, of course, my beer was still sitting there untouched, and I had been cleaning my brush and my glass was water, and I had drank the same water as if it were beer. Oh, no. And so I, at that moment, I told my wife, I said, I think I, I, think I may be hooked. I love <laughs> this. Is, this has so captured my attention that I, I, I think I want to learn more about it. So I started painting, watercolors, just practicing, and, and then a, a couple years later, on 9-11, I was, was going to paint with a watercolor painter in Chapel Hill named David Stickle, who was a good friend and really a nationally known painter. And I asked him if I could have lessons. And, and so we went there with he, my daughter. And uh, we were painting in watercolor. And we got a phone call and said, go look at t television. So we ran upstairs and looked at the TV. And, and we saw that a plane hit one of the buildings. And we went, oh, that's terrible. And then we went back downstairs and started painting because we didn't. The whole story wasn't there. You know, we didn't get the mm -hmm. whole story. Yeah. And then, wow. then the phone blew up, and, and that was the end of my first lesson. Wow. And uh, from there, I painted probably about seven, eight years, and then I started an art gallery in Raleigh. Uh, oh, that's right. Here in yeah. Cary, Waverly Artist Group, and continued to paint watercolors. And at the end of that time, I decided we were in it for five years till the rent went to sixty thousand dollars a year. Oof. And then we decided, I just had to learn to paint in oils. And, uh, and that was the end of the story. I've been captured by it ever since. It was, it was like, this was the world I was meant to paint in. So I've enjoyed it. Man, so that's, that's great. how I got started. Well, that's wonderful. Um, and in the most recent years, I think some uh, people that are watching might really enjoy hearing how you... Um, got into the gallery that you are in in Charleston and kind of like, you know, I think that mm -hmm. it's, it's really inspiring to hear, hear people that were starting their career out and connected with a certain gallery and you just, you, I, th I think you just kind of like mm -hmm. walked in and started talking to them. No, actually, well, we were, did, my wife and I went to Charleston for a vacation mm -hmm. and I Went online, found some people who had a plein air society, contacted them, asked if I could paint with them, and I did. I met a handful of women. Mm -hmm. I called it my harem because it's only, <laughs> only women plein air paint. And so I was out with all these women painting in the city, actually, in Charleston. And we uh, went out to lunch. My wife joined us. And uh, at the end of lunch, as the other women left, my wife was, said, turned to me and said, you need to talk to this lady. And uh, so I met Laura. And... Uh, and Laura said, um, she said, how much do you sell your paintings for? And, and, I, and I had one there that I painted that day. It was a window box. And, and I said, this one? She said, yeah. I said, it's $100. And she <laughs> said, $100? And I said, yeah. And she, I said, 75 <laughs> And she just laughed. She said, are you serious, 75 I said, 50 or I'll, I'll give it to you, you know? <laughs> I, you know, I didn't thought much about selling my paintings. I didn't think much of them, really. I didn't, I didn't know that... that didn't know whether I could paint that well. In any event, she said, I'll tell you what, if you'll take me out to breakfast tomorrow morning, I'll change your life. And I said, well, that's quite, quite the offer. So we met her the next morning for breakfast, and uh, she started by saying, well, I'm the curator for the Little Prince Fine Art Gallery, and uh, we love your work, and we'd like to hang your work. Oh, wow. And so I kind of just sort of, you know, 
there I was. Yeah, you just <laughs> fell right was. into it. And I've been there for five years, and uh, and so it's been. And her one caveat was that she said, if you get in, you will have to work really hard, and I will be very hard on you. And, and she has she has lived up to her promise <laughs> of being very hard on you. Because she really, if I show her something she's not pleased with it, she'll just tell me to do it over again. And and there have been some times in the early stages where I've done the same painting three or four times mm. until I, you know, begin to figure out what I was doing. But that's kind of been the story. Man, that is a great story. So how did I met you and a couple of other artists, Michael and Josh and was able to be around some people who actually knew how to paint. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> and knew what people were talking about when they said values and things like that, which I really didn't think much about it at the time. But mm. in the process, being around other artists and then starting you know, having a studio and those kind of things, you just learned a lot about painting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm excited about having you on here. It's been a long time coming. Yep. And it's, um, you know, he, my, Gary has been with us since the, and he was actually part of the inception of East Oak Studio. So he is one of the reasons that we ended up moving to Raleigh. He was like, hey, you know, we were looking at all sorts of places in, in the U.S. to move to start this company. And uh, Raleigh wasn't even one we were considering. And we were looking at Austin, Texas and Denver and and Philadelphia and New York and um, you name it, D.C. Mm -hmm. We looked everywhere, Charlottesville, Nashville, and um, we couldn't decide on a place. And we were, we were trying really hard to figure that out. And, and uh, Gary, we were talking to Gary about it, and he was like, yeah, have you considered Raleigh? And none of us had, and I, I kind of like looked up some stats on Raleigh and what's going on, and I was very impressed with kind of what's happening here. And, um, and so I was like, um, we should go, we should go check it out. And everybody felt comfortable with moving down here, and that for six people, that was hard to get six people to be comfortable with any location, <laughs> and uh, moving our lives and all of that, you know. And so uh, we looked at it, and, and the rest is history, and then Gary helped get us connected, and to people here, and it, it's been wonderful. So he's played a, a huge part of the foundation of, of East Oaks, and we're absolutely grateful for, for him for that. So, so like always, I'm just lining things up for the putt. You know, you're going to hear that from me more and more. Just kind of figuring out where I want things to be on the on the canvas. So we have a number of people who have logged on and say hello. Um, let's see. Awesome. We have Esteban saying hey, hello Esteban. from Sweden. Uh, we have Marcella, who says hi from Waterford, Ireland. Hello. Uh, Sean Kelly, who says hello, greetings from Utah. Um, Jean Green, happy to be here from Florida. And we've got Alyssa from Australia. Awesome. Uh, Julie from Burgundy and Paul. Um, and let's see, Mar Marcella asks, or Marcella, um, Gary, how old were you when you started painting? Uh, 64. I'm 83 now. That, I'm, I can guarantee you, is going to be inspiring for many, many people. And he's, he's made it his, he's transitioning to be, this to be more of his full-time career um, at this stage, because he still, you still work for uh -huh. the Navigators, yeah. if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. And um, and so he was just telling me that he's going to slowly start transitioning to where this will be uh, more of fast. his main, main focus. <laughs> or quick, fast. A fast transition, as this is Early main next year. Man, that's awesome. Yeah, I think um, kind of a recurring theme that we've talked about on here um, several times is, you know, like... 
age and like at what point is it too late and um when you're dead exactly you're right it, the the thesis statement here is that it's never too late um and you know if you have a hand and you have a brush and you have something to paint on now's the time yep well said all right i think i'm making this too big i gotta bring it down a little bit here There we go. Sue says hi from Virginia. The month is flying by and it's been wonderful. Well, we have thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it for sure. So having, I don't know, it's been, it's been fun. I, I typically paint so much on just one painting through a month. It's just been really nice to like spend some time painting um, a, a different painting almost every day, you know. It's been really a lot of fun. Do you find that um, periods like this where you're working on something different each day, does it help you feel a little bit refreshed when you go in to work on a much larger project? It does, actually. I, I find that it does. I think that the variety is the spice of life, right? And, um, and because of that, it, it helps. It helps me quite a bit um, with just resetting the mind. You know, I think that so often we can get caught up in any workflow to losing the vision of what what we found joy in. And I believe that doing stuff like this helps us break that out of the mold a little bit and rediscover why we loved painting, which is discovery and learning, trying new things, experimenting. So, so I think experimentation leads to discovery and I think that that's the thing that really gives us like a bit of that dopamine hit. So, so that part I love. And I'm gonna put in just a few more lines. I'm gonna put in this bit of the edge of this table. Well, I first gotta put some paint on. All right, so one of the tricks when you're stepping back from your subject like you are and one of the other good reasons, let me say this first, the other, one of the good reasons for stepping back is that you get a different vantage point. Um, and so the perspective changes just a touch. And so you, I think I prefer the vantage point from further away than being mm -hmm. just like dead up on mm -hmm. top of it, you know? Yep. So, um, so that's one of the reasons for on the table. But the other is, is there's a one of the tips that I have for people who are first starting to discover stepping back is that you actually gain more control, especially if you're making like a straight line, by having your paintbrush, holding your paintbrush at the end of the paintbrush. And when you lay the paintbrush down on your painting, if you drag it, while holding it at the end, it allows for all the jitters to get out of your hand. And you can make a very straight line, especially if it's a plumb line, as you go down with it. So you can make a far more straight line using the end of your brush and laying the brush down onto the painting and then pulling it than you can if you were to like be up close on your hand like this, painting really, really closely. So. Um, that was a good idea. I just tried it. It works. It, 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 it really helps. <laughs> so, um, so that part is something to consider. I'll put that you in know. my book. Do it. <laughs> Jean good. says, so happy to hear this. I retired from teaching after 28 years and took up painting. Sometimes I think I'm too old, but if you want to do it, just do it. Um, and that's, that's in reference to you, Gary. And Joyce says, bonjour from Montreal. I'm 70 and no mentors are so important. Thank you, Gary, for inspiring me to keep mentoring young artists too. Yeah. 
Gary has been a huge mentor in my life here. And um, because of that, you know, I really do believe he's been helpful in helping me get connected to people and um, just in a hundred different ways. And so it's, it's, it's a real pleasure to be able to like do a live stream with him today. Oh. <laughs> so in one of those situations where I was like, oh, please come on because I know you're going to be great, you know. And <laughs> so far you're... Well, proven to be true. I, I'm actually putting paint on the board. So. <laughs> that's the start. So, I mean, that's like right there. I was like a total winner, you know. Yeah. I love it. And I do. I don't mind painting like you know with your arm way out. That's kind of fun, isn't it? I, I mean, that's kind of what I do. At home. My 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 uh, tabaret is in front of my easel. You know, so it's really awkward because I have to kneel on top of my easel to get up, you know, close and paint. So it's really awkward. So this is a better way. Well, so your stool of shame is actually a tabaret, so it's yeah, it dual a, purpose. It is. It does do it. <laughs> yep. That's embarrassing, you know, kind of. But I'm trying to find my palette knife. Oh, you need <laughs> I was, a palette knife. no. I was looking for a palette knife, and it was in my hand. <laughs> it's gonna, I can tell it's going to be one of those days. I'm not have. I don't have my glasses on my head, right? <laughs> you do not. It's one of those where I start looking for my glasses, and it's on my head. I think that's happened to everybody, though. Everybody at some point has gone looking for their palette knife to realize that they're actively holding it. Yep. <laughs> I'm really trying to do. I've been I, I've been practicing lately, as I've been painting. I've been trying to do uh, sort of just make ten marks on the painting mm. to decide where I'm placing the what's of interest to me. Yeah. Mm. So not you know not 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 you know painting, but just putting marks out. And I've been practicing it a great deal, and then today I, I, I forgot to do it. <laughs> so <laughs> well, I'm, I'm kind of just reversing years just for a second here to make sure I'm doing it like I like to do it. I'm, I didn't I didn't fail badly. I mean, just I kind of kind of got, got lost here for a second. Ah, uh, but now well. I'm back. All right, so I'm just gonna I'm just making a little bit of background color. Y'all are gonna get so tired of hearing me say this, but as you know. The reason I do this first is it helps gain context for the rest of the painting. So I like to kind of get a bit of this background color down and in. Also, I need to lighten it just a little bit, a little bit more. A little more white, but whenever I do that, I want to also add just a hint more warmth to it too. Because if I add white, it's going to neutralize it, which in this instance, it's warmer and it'll cool it down. So I feel like this is a kind of a closer color relationship here. Am I supposed to talk? I don't know if this is uh, true for all of the screens for everybody tuning in, but um, at least on my screen back here, it's really nice to see um, the neutrality of the gray background is really making the pinky tones and the roses pop. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I don't know what everybody's screens or displays looks like, but um, that's kind of just a good mode of thinking when setting up a still life is thinking, how are these colors interacting? Yep, exactly. Let's see, we've got some other folks who have joined us as well. Um, we have Judith from... Virginia. We have Paul from Michigan. Nice. Um, we have Emily, uh, who says, hi, friends. Happy to join in for a few from the school pickup line. That's nice. awesome. <laughs> That's great. Just goes to show there's always time for art in a busy day. I love that. <laughs> that is fantastic. Uh, we have Pilar, uh, who says hi from Buenos Aires, Argentina. Oh, wonderful. Uh, we have, let's see, a couple other folks. Let me scroll up. Uh, we have Chris. Yeah, this is awesome. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. So good to hear. Hmm? It's just so good to hear when people are 
They're here. For joining and yeah. hanging out with us. And to just like, I don't know, I feel like after a month, you know, we've kind of gotten to know folks on here. And um, that's been a really fun extension of, of the community. Yeah, really has. We're trying really hard to build that community. So if y'all don't know yet, uh, check out our Discord. We have um, a lot of people posting what they're working on. I posted a whole slew of images of days that I haven't posted yet on there recently. And so you can check out like what the final product looks like. Um, so but people are talking, critiquing each other. We have a little critique section where you can put your work up for people to to ask about. It's gonna be it's gonna be a really great community. So today while I'm working on this, I'm gonna um, also work on just a, a, diff a few different color variations and try a few interesting things with, with my colors because I just see so many beautiful colors up here. So I'm going to just kind of keep pushing and pulling a few things while I'm working on it. Uh, another trick if, for people who don't paint flowers but want to is to consider that a lot of people want to focus on the vase and to consider the fact that the flowers are the thing that are going to move the most on you. So if they're going to be the thing that's going to move the most on you and they'll, they'll die, but a vase is not going to die, you know? So go ahead and work on the flowers first in the painting. Focus on them. I, I'm just getting the background in so that I gain context. But then the vase should be the last thing you're considering, you know? As long as you just have decent placement of everything else, you can go from there. So. And another pro tip for floral still lives that's maybe worth mentioning. Um, I don't know how well it comes through on camera, but um, if you look really, really closely, you can maybe see some pieces of tape um, where we have gone across the top portion of the vase to try to specifically position the floor the flowers together. Um, and sometimes flower shops will actually give you like a little lid for a container that has some holes punched into it to help you do this. But if you don't have that special lid, honestly, masking tape is just, you know, quick, easy, cheap way to do it. Um, and it gives you a lot of uh, control in positioning your flowers together and creating good relationships. That's good. Good, good pro tip there. Uh, we have Rostislav from the Ukraine who says hello. hello. And um, let's see. That's awesome. Thank you so much for joining. We have Janice uh, who says hi from Plano, Texas. Happy accident finding you online. Love watching the brushwork at normal speed. Oh, that's great. Yeah, because I get, you know, there is a decent amount of high speed stuff on there. So. We, we are not everyone's flavor, but for people who have a taste for watching the longhand of it, we are exactly what you need. I'll never forget, we had, when we first started doing these live streams, we had a comment of a person being like, you know, it's so slow. It's just like, I feel like I'm watching paint dry, literally. And like, it was like making all of these like trolley comments. And it's like, yep, yeah, are. that's, that's fine. There's plenty of people out there making speed paintings and like speeding up the video. And we do a few of those too, but this, this is not that this is, um, this is the longhand so that you have company while you're painting on your work in your studio. And um, do you feel like people are painting along with you and are part of your friendship, your community? Yeah. So that's what I think it's for us. That's what it, that is the demographic we're trying to hit. No instant gratification allowed. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, if you're painting, the you joys in the working won't be gratified instantly. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Maybe a lifetime later. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't that bad. <laughs> uh, we have Edward who's logged on saying hi from Edmonton, Canada. We just had our first snow today. Whoa. Oof. Uh, yeah. Wow. Well, let me tell you, down here in North Carolina, um, there is no snow to be found. No. 
We're just starting to get some changing leaves. That's about all we've got, which I love. I love the four seasons here in, in Raleigh. Emily says, love the flower tips. There's also floral glue that you can use on petals to keep them from opening up on you, which is great for flowers like peonies. That's awesome. Oh, wow. I've never tried that before. Uh, yeah, try floral that glue. She said. Floral glue, yeah. That, I'm totally gonna try that. That's a great tip, thank you. Um, I don't get to paint flowers that much because I'm just so busy with other things. So when I do get the chance, it's so much fun. Of course, that is the theme of me going, it's so much fun, but, um, but it is. <laughs> Not supposed to be fun, it's supposed to be really hard work. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, there are, and there are definitely people out there that truly believe that I'll, I'll never forget Jacob saying like, you know, if there isn't a, a, a bit of like severe anxiety when you're painting, then I don't know if you're doing it right. <laughs> and I was like, well, maybe, but there's other people who I think to find that. it to be therapeutic more so than trying to like accomplish just the, the, uh, trauma of getting things to feel exactly how like an old master might have painted something, you know. You know, it's interesting that when you're painting, just to try to keep in my mind that the, the consequence of making marks mm. is a painting. The but consequence trying of to paint a painting the consequence is just a bunch of random marks. <laughs> mm. Well, that's kind of our focus for tomorrow. Yeah, it is. Tell, tell everybody what we're doing tomorrow, Evie. Um, so tomorrow I'm going to be painting alongside Lewis, um, and our focus is going to be really about brushwork and resisting the urge to uh, be really finicky with your brush strokes yeah. and have the courage to leave your strokes where they are. Yep. Um, and I think that that's something that a lot of folks struggle with. I know I struggle with it. So um, I'm really excited about tomorrow because um, I think it's going to be a great learning process for everybody. Um, and I'm really excited about our subject for tomorrow. It's going to be, well, we'll leave it as a surprise. It's yeah, gonna be a fun, it's going to be a fun subject. Spooky surprise for everybody. Um, but yeah, that's very relevant to tomorrow. It's hard to st stay in that moment, though. Mm -hmm. You can see it and you think, well, that doesn't really look like a tree. Yep. Do you have any advice, Gary, on that front? Oh, do I have any advice on that? Well, I guess, so the, the, on, on the back side of it is when I finish painting, one of, one of the things I'm trying to figure out is whether or not I created something that was organic. Mm. Counterbalance with something that was inorganic feeling. Mm. You know, so I like those, I like to find both of those in the painting. Some part of it's, you know, there's some really nice straight lines or some stuff that's really, oh yeah, that's, oh, that, that looks just like a whatever. Mm. Mm -hmm. but, but the most important part of the painting, that's just a foil against the rest of it. It makes the rest of it work. Mm. At least that's how I think about it. I all about context. Mm -hmm. I love it. Give myself a decent amount of room for all of these. Woo. Ooh. About lost a brush, but it didn't. We're good. I recovered. There's usually a brush that falls at least once every time. Yep. Sometimes we say opa when it happens. It's just, <laughs> yeah. you know, it happens. <sighs> Flinging, plain, fl ooh. Ooh. Flinging paint everywhere. There you go. You got <laughs> it <can> out. <laughs> uh, Moon says, hi from Turkey. So mesmerizing watching you guys. Oh, well, I'm so glad you're joining us. And Lean says, hi from the Netherlands. It's rainy here probably until May. Oof. Good night. That's a 
Uh, it's a long time. Maybe a good time to stay inside and do some still lives. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. And like you, unless you like that rainy, moody like landscape, mm. um, which I love. Yeah, those people that can paint those moody scenes, um, pretty pretty amazing. But you have to really uh, face the elements, brave the elements outside if you're going to do that. Lewis, was it you that was telling me last year that um, somebody was telling me a plein air painting tip uh, for winter time when it's really cold out that you can poke a hole in mittens? Yes, yes. And <laughs> hold your brush through the hole in the mittens? <laughs> yeah, um, it is a tip I got from a friend. I can't even remember who it was, but I remember like loving the tip so much that I like, stored it. Fingers. In, store, yeah, I got with two fingers. So basically he would take... He would paint with um, with gloves with cut off fingertips, right? And then he would get a sock, a wool sock, and he'd put a hole through it so the brush could fit through. Mm. And then he would put his whole hand in there. And because it's like the most of his hand is yeah. double layered, yeah. it would keep his fingers super warm. And yet he still had all the ability to brush. And if you mm. have painted out in the winter, you'll yeah. realize yeah. very yeah. quickly how important it is to keep your hands warm because... They stop working <laughs> after a while. Yeah. So anyway, it's a great tip. Yeah, I think for someone like me with Raynaud's syndrome. Um, yeah, it'd be that's huge. A, that's a big thing. I get cold fingers very, very quickly. So we'll have to do some wintry plein airs this, this year. Mm -hmm. Love that idea. Yeah, I like doing those in like Palm Beach. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll see you there. <laughs> yeah. So right now, the largely what I'm working on is just scale of the subject, making sure that I've got the right scale of everything. Because uh, if I make it too big, I won't be able to put the based in exactly the way I want it to be. So I'm just double checking my scale on a lot of these things, making sure it's all gonna fit. Well, when I finish this, I'll jump in and paint a flower. <laughs> Sounds good. I think yeah. we have an extra one too. I could bring it out You know me, you. I, I paint fast. Yeah, you do. Gotta watch out. Well, that's that outdoor painting. <laughs> yeah. You know, at that speedy. Well, you have to you have to be moving, don't you? Yep. Although if you just get that first dark spot nailed down, you can pretty much figure out the rest of the painting whether the sun shifts or not. Mm-hmm. And since nobody else was there but you, yep, you have a great deal of freedom. <laughs> That's true. That's oh. Very true. I really like watching uh, how uh, Scott Christensen paints mm. and his approach to that. He's, all, he's always saying, nobody's there but you, so. <laughs> right, so feel free, have that liberty. Now, when I'm doing something like this where the setup is simple, for me, it's pretty paramount to make sure yeah. that, um, that the design of of everything fitting on your page mm -hmm. the right way is is uh, you, working. Either that, or you have to add another board to that board. Yep. Continue. Exactly. That's awkward looking. <laughs> yeah. That's very awkward looking when you have that mm -hmm. hanging in the in the gallery. Tough, you know. tough framing. <laughs> it is very hard. It's just a chump chump toy. You know, don't worry about it. Yeah, right, it, it looks exactly. like a panel on a panel, but it's just one panel. We'll make it a. We'll just say it's a diptych. <laughs> And just continues to the next one. <laughs> so what are some of the um, conventions that you're thinking about in composing Louis? So I'm thinking about uh, sort of the negative and positive space and trying to create energy in the imbalance, but make balance happen in the imbalance. You know, just similar things that I maybe have mentioned before, but... I'm getting close to having everything kind of figured out. But um, the, that's the main convention that I'm 
thinking about as we're as I'm working is how does this fit with the rest of the painting so far and making sure that the design of the elements are kind of hitting like interesting diagonals. So it's more like right there and then making sure. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, and just making sure that the negative space is interesting as much as the positive space and kind of going from there. I'm gonna bring this horizon line down or the back of the table, it's not really a horizon line. Back of the table down relatively low compared to where I had it. And then we'll, as soon as we have design elements in, I'll be rocking and rolling. So we'll have, <clears throat> I'll have the backups prepare a, another floral for Gary when he finishes his, <laughs> mm -hmm. his painting over there. Notice at this time, I'm not really worried about the leaves, just kind of getting the right distances happening in there. And it's better to kind of cover, I believe, it's better to kind of cover everything yeah. with your background color when you're working with, with uh, glass, just to kind of help make everything more cohesive. Sane asks, do you use medium to thin out the paints or do you paint straight from the tube? Um, in this instance, I'm using just a touch of lean medium made by Chelsea Art Materials, and that's what it looks like. And then, um, and then Gary, I think you have a touch of oleo gel for just later. Just a touch. A little bit goes a long yeah, way. I got a little bit too much in the beginning. I've had to kind of work around it a little bit. There. I got too much. I'm used to. I usually use a little bit of Galkid. Oh, well, I have Galkid. I should have gotten it out for no, you. Just didn't think about it. It's okay. It's a challenge to do this now that I have paint slipping all over the panel. There you go. <laughs> okay. All right. That is all she wrote right now on the bottom. I'm going to go work on the top. Um, flowers, since those are the things that move on me, and uh, that's going to gain the most context because I can work on the vase even if the flowers are dead. So that's, I remember when I was painting with Michael, that was like his biggest tip for people that he sees as an issue is they want to start they're kind of scared of the flowers, so they go and hang out with the vase yes. for a while. And and he's like, you know, those flowers, they're going to move on you if you don't if you don't hurry up and address them. So, um, I have always taken that to heart, and it's a, been very helpful for working from life. All right, and just mix a couple of colors here. Also, when I'm painting white flowers, I never start with white. I always start what I would consider the mid-tone color of the flower, and then I build up to white. And if it's a plain air painting, the building up to white, I end up using titanium more at the end mm -hmm. than I do mm -hmm. um, other colors because it helps um, brighten up the painting, it's more opaque and um, less transparent, and so it'll, it allows for those like really powerful bright colors to come to play. Some beautiful, rich color on the inside of this rose. It's like it's perfectly muted, but it's also like really, really lovely. So we're going to try to see if we can get close to hitting more of this like peachy, yellowy color in there. A little bit of color goes a long way on a flower too. Stephanie says, 
I had lots of fun exploring Chelsea Lang's YouTubes and products. Thank you for inviting her to paint squashes. Oh, yeah, she's, she's wonderful and um, very prolific with her YouTube channel. So very proud of her for what she's made it to be. And she'll be back. She paints with us pretty frequently for the Painting from Life series that we do every month. Yep. And what, what was the medium she used there? Um, she has a, a YouTube channel uh -huh. um, called, it's just called Chelsea Lang, right? Chelsea Lang Painting? I can't remember the exact name Chelsea of Chelsea Lang it. Studio, maybe? Studio, maybe. Okay. Uh -huh. um, and she has a, a, a wonderful following, but she produces weekly films and videos for uh -huh. helping people out. Uh -huh. All right, I'm going to mix just a few shadow colors, a few shadow notes. I'm going to add a little bit of the background color into it too, and that's going to help make things a bit more cohesive. Paul shares kind of a funny story. He says, Julie knew watercolor plain air painters from New England who added whiskey to keep their water from freezing. They called themselves the whiskey painters. Whoa. In my honest opinion, they also drank some to keep warm. Yeah, I would. <laughs> I'd be all about making sure. You know, stay warm. That kind of makes sense, though, just to keep, keep your water from freezing over. Yeah, I never yeah. thought about that. That's, That's clever. Smart. Good idea. I wonder if that would have any ill effects though on the paper? The acidity from the alcohol? I don't know. No, I, th I don't think curious. The, the point was you're supposed to drink the alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> A few drops for the paper to use it as the excuse to bring the rest of the alcohol for you. There you go. All right. Make some flowers. Gary, do you have advice for anybody out there um, in regards to painting from a photo reference? Yeah, I probably do. I mean, it may not be very good, but I have to. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, don't, I can't show you very easily, but I, I take a photograph and the, <coughs> there are two things I learned. One was that when I paint from a photograph, <coughs> I used to all the time, I had a really difficult time, <coughs> particularly with buildings. They would like encompass 80% of my painting. Mm -hmm. You know, just like because I was so focused, oh, this building is really nice. And so I'd start painting the building. I just didn't think about placing the building. <coughs> when I started thinking about placing the building, I tried doing it by cropping it with, you know, art grid and procreate and <clears throat> and I could get a painting or a picture cropped, but I was still kind of limited, you know, unless I wanted to be like go get Photoshop and then learn how to, you know, unclick one and pull it out and move a cow over here beside the camel and you know, it just create all these objects all over the painting. And then I got a little too carried away with that because that was became clever. And so I ended up just doing, I would just sign a com commit to doing at least 15 thumbnail sketches, taking the focus point, whatever the focal point I wanted to be, and, and moving it in different places in the, in the painting, mm. in the sketch. So I just, I just did that over and over and over again. So I'll use that for every, all my paintings now. I just, it takes a little time, but it didn't, doesn't take all that long, but it takes take a half an hour or so, 45 minutes, something like that, but you end up with... You have a bunch of options. You can look at them and think, oh, I'll move this rock over here. And in fact, this painting I'm doing, I did, I did that on. I, I, I have a rock. I'm moving it. <laughs> I'm moving this big rock all by myself. <laughs> yeah. you know, about 40 feet to the right. And anyway, so that's a thought. That's something I do. Yeah, that's great advice. Thank you. That helps a lot. That was awesome, Gary.
Is there any story behind the scene that you're painting? Is this a place you visited? Yeah, I was there this summer. My wife and I went to Maine, and we stayed you know, in a little town called Korea, C-O-R-E-A, which is part, just, just a little north of the um, Bar Harbor. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> it's the hidden half of Acadia National Park. Oh. The big one where all the tourists go is um, it's busy. <laughs> Yeah. And, but if across the bay, across the uh, Scudic Bay, uh, is Scudic Peninsula. Mm -hmm. And on that bay, on that peninsula, is the other half of the national park. And, you know, it's, and it's relatively unexplored. Mm. <laughs> wow. And it's beautiful. And you can, just, you can drive right down on the, you're right on the water. It's, just, it's gorgeous. And uh, so it's a nice place to paint. So that's where we were. We stayed there. Hmm. We stayed at an awesome bed and breakfast. Anybody ever wants a great bed and breakfast? I'm an Airbnb called, um, uh, call something, I'll tell you in a minute. <laughs> uh, Slack Tide. Slack Tide. Yeah, Slack Tide. The lady runs it. It's really wonderful. It's a great host. And, and uh, so it was nice there. We really enjoyed it. And, and I have a, a, about four million paintings from that trip. It feels like anyway. Well, if you sell them for all a dollar, all, they're all available today for a dollar. Then you've got four million dollars. No, I, I mean, I'd sell them all for a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep my own copies. That's funny. Yeah, no. So, yeah, so they're you know they're nice to have. It's, it's a nice place to stay, and folks who run it are really nice. Mm. That sounds beautiful. It does sound beautiful. I don't know what it is about flowers that it just, it's just a simple beauty. Um, I don't like a whole lot of color in, in the flowers I paint because there's something about the beauty and the subtlety that I'm... The shapes and really, shadows. Shapes and shadows, yeah. but not, you know, just not like a whole lot of frills, mm -hmm. but there's just like something elegant about it that you discover when you look, look at it closely and focus on it for a bit. This is almost as if they were meant to be that way. That's right, exactly. Do you want to talk a little bit about your process of um, kind of composing the structure and geometry of different florals? Yeah, yeah. So uh, honestly, the, the biggest thing that I take, that I tr I'm considering while I'm painting flowers is the spherical nature of it, but also the concavity nature of flowers that happens often. That's the first thing I'm considering. There's a lot of things to consider. That's the first one, uh, because the value is influenced the most by, by that. Um, and so I'm considering what is the light most facing plane areas of the flower first. And part of that is there's parts of it that are like a satellite dish that are concave and then there's other parts of the flower that are, are taking on the properties of a spherical nature. And so at the beginning, I'm just, when I'm in this like nebulous stage, I'm just considering how the light is falling around the flower. And then as, as I continue to push into the flower more and lean into more of what's going on, I'll, I'll add more understanding of what the flower's doing, uh, where light's passing through petals, light transference or light transmission, and how those areas get more chromatic, and then there's other areas that are less chromatic because they're, they're absorbing the atmosphere more of like the gray background colors. So uh, just some different things that I'm considering at different stages, and so this stage, I'm just considering what's shadow, what's light, and getting a relative color harmony in the nature between the light and the shadow to represent the flower as a whole. So, um, and then as I build it up, I'll, I'll get more into the detail. And part of the poetry is how far do you want to take the next stage? What, 
what's important, what's valuable to you that you're finding beautiful in this particular setup. And so, of uh, flowers. And, you know, Michael would sometimes, almost to the detriment of sounding a bit cryptic, would be talk about, like, the truth of the flower and trying to find the truth. And some people, it's hard for them to even grasp, like, what the heck does he mean by the truth? You know, but I think uh, maybe a, a way that has made sense to me is explaining that it is about what you're finding beautiful in a flower because whatever is beautiful more than likely, and at least my philosophical understanding, is what is resonating as more truthful about the, the setup for you. So beauty and truth, I think, are closely linked. And so um, to me, that's what it's, it's about, is finding what, what feels beautiful to you and trying to connect with it in a certain way that is identifiable in your mark making and in painting, which, you know, is a mediocre copy of this beautiful masterpiece. So we have to use our own poetic translations of what we see in order for us to accomplish something that is relatively similar to something that is beautiful that we see in front of us, you know. That's beautiful. Thank you. Flowers are much more than just flowers. You know, that's a great statement in the sense that I almost feel like most things in the world are much more than our surface perspective of what they are. Oh. Uh, you know? Was that a, a oh, yeah, that's... Oh, that's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I just was going to tell you something. I just, I was writing this week, and I wrote, I wrote a poem this week, but... Uh, which I sent to a friend, and he wrote back, if I can find it. Uh, he, <clears throat> I had written this poem, and then he wrote, sitting with your poem reminded me of what W.B. Yeats said, <clears throat> by logic and reason, we die hourly. By imagination, we live. Mm. Oh, man, that's and beautiful. By logic and reason, we die hourly, and by imagination, we live. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Yeah. So, oh, thank you for sharing that. So I've written this little poem, Walking Out of Gaza. Uh, oh, yeah. And he was responding mm. to it. Louie, can I ask you a favor? Yes, am I in the way could on the camera? You, yeah, could you lower your crab claw a little bit? Yeah, my crab Thank claw. You. <laughs> yes, as always, you know, it's important that the audience gets to see. So I'm all about you telling me all those things that you need. Thank you very much. I think it's kind of fun, though, to see, like, um, people's natural sort of, like, cadence and positioning with their body and body language as mm. they paint. Um, and I think that that can also naturally vary depending on the subject or like if if you're kind of just like breezing through a painting and feeling like really good and really calm about it or if you're like really, really struggling and fighting about it. Um, That's a good point. Keep breathing. I'm yeah. Saying. Yeah. Yeah. Let painting be a breathing exercise. <laughs> You can really forget to breathe when you get wound up. Yeah, oh, man. Lewis has a really funny photo of me that he took last year. Oh, yeah. I was working on a, um, gosh, I think that was while I was working on a self-portrait. Um, but he took this photo of me kind of in secret where I'm, like, right up on my easel. <laughs> and I'm just... <laughs> not breathing. I'm Sheer not determination. Breathing. I'm, I have the biggest, like, frown on my face. And I just look like I'm going to kill my canvas. <laughs> But it, it's truly one of my favorite photos I've ever taken of anyone in the studio because it just is a, a beautiful example of sheer determination. Mm -hmm. And I just, I love, like, might not have been healthy for you to, like, be in that <laughs> position, but I love it because it just shows the utter grittiness that Evie has in determining, like, in determination to achieve the thing that she's trying to achieve. And, oh, I just love it. Oh, that's 
Thank you, Lewis. One of my favorites. Um, you know, part of this whole series was to help people have the liberty to fail mm -hmm. because fail failure is so much a part of the success. And I know I've said this, but I, for the new people who may be just starting to listen, you know, um, there is such a liberty to that because like, for example, today I'm just... I'm so freed from not worrying about how much this is determined, like determining, being determined to make it work and just having fun experimenting and discovering. And almost always, I make a better painting when I do it that way. When I think, I, I stop thinking about it so heavily and just have fun and just enjoy the process. Mm. Like the, the who, could not, who who could paint and not have fun? <laughs> oh man, um, I, I wish I could say no one, but um, I bet I bet there's people out there that are having a hard time, like yeah. you know, utter despair. <laughs> that failure is seldom final and rarely fatal. Mm. <laughs> yep. There you go. Um, I had a friend one time. He was telling me a story of another situation where he had a friend who was playing tennis and they came back and they're like, well, how was the tennis match? And they're like, it's horrible. I don't understand why they choose love for zero because it's more like they should call it total humiliation. And, and they're like, the guy was like, I sometimes feel that way with when I'm painting. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's like, everyone said this was supposed to be fun. <laughs> oh. So what is everyone else painting today? I hope y'all are painting along. And if not, we're, we're glad to be a part of your dinner hangout or whatever it might be that you're doing, your, your drive and waiting for your kids when you're picking them up from school. <laughs> we're just glad to be a part of your day. And hopefully it will bring a little bit of joy to your day. James says that he's currently working on a head of lettuce, tomatoes, and aubergine. Lettuce first, as it won't survive the heat. Is that for dinner or? Yeah. For yeah. a painting, I think. <laughs> and dinner. They don't have to be mutually exclusive. Dual purpose. Yeah. There you go. <sighs> Gary, Gary's working on some mad genius over there, I can tell. Well, I'm trying to. Keep focused on what I said I believed in. <laughs> Just, you know, make the mark. Be happy. Go away. All right, this is the stage where I'm like, now it's time to focus on the flower. You know, I'm trying to decide which one is going to be. I think I'm going to make the left my focal point, and then my right secondary, and then this tertiary and then we'll work on the rest of the painting down here. Mm. So I should drop my stuff here and just watch you. That would have been fun. <laughs> <laughs> Be more useful for Don't worry, it's recorded. <laughs> you know, I, you know, I enjoy watching. One of, one of the artists you paint here is Elena Bassa. Oh, yeah. I've watched yeah. her paintings multiple times. Have you really? That's awesome. That and the, the lady who painted the... Uh, the cotton? Yeah, the cotton. Yeah, that's um, Grace DeVito. Yeah, Grace DeVito. Uh -huh. Yeah. If y'all haven't checked those out, you need to check them out, or everybody. Those are just good. I just, in fact, I, uh, I've learned a lot from both of them. I, uh, uh, to tell the truth, after watching Grace DeVito's, I just so happened, I was walking in my neighborhood, and there's a guy in our neighborhood who who's a, works for a, a university in the area, and he's in agriculture, and he was growing cotton plants in his front yard. Was he? Really? <laughs> and, and so I, you know, bashfully went to the front door. I did. I wasn't bashful at all. I went right <laughs> to the front door and asked him. I said, those are cotton plants, you know. 
And I said, uh, and I said, uh, you know, I told him I was an artist. I always, you know, tell people like that. Then they think, you know, like you're magic or something. And and um, and I said, I wonder if I could have a couple. He said, Oh, I'm going to cut them down in a couple of days. You can take all you want. So I, I still have them you know, a year and a half later. But uh, I did some paintings of them, and uh, and then I did a small like six by eight and carried it back to him and gave it to him as a gift. And, and so, so they invite me in for a little glass. And, we had a little glass and we talked and and then I, and I said there were some more. He said take the rest of them, you know. So I have like a, a bucket full of them at home. Oh wow! Because they last, you know, for years. Wow. Yeah. Oh yeah. And uh, and then he said, you know, we have a home. I won't say where, but he said we have a home overseas. And I went, oh, really? <laughs> he says we have this old castle that sits across the road from our house. <laughs> Would you mind painting that for us? So I ended up getting this really large commission, you know. It's a 24 by 36 commission, which I did for them, you know, on their thing. Wow. And, uh, so it was really fun. So make sure you ask your neighbors about their flowers and yeah. paint one for them, and they might ask you to paint one for them. For <laughs> That's great advice. Yeah. I, um, the Don't other forget weekend, to ask. Yeah. <laughs> the other weekend I was driving out to Fayetteville, North Carolina, to drop a piece off for an exhibition. Mm-hmm. And um, on my way down, I'm driving, and I just see... Gorgeous cotton field after yes. gorgeous cotton field, yeah. and it's everywhere down there. Yeah. Um, and if I wasn't like, in a, if I hadn't been under a time crunch, I totally would have pulled over and just, you know, tried to do a quick little painting or sketch or something. But unfortunately, I was in kind of a time crunch uh, to drop this piece off. But go, I go definitely back. want to go back. Go back. Cotton is fun to paint. I love painting cotton. You grew up with. Growing cotton, correct? My dad, yeah. yeah, my dad was a cotton farmer. Um, so, and uh, I grew up in the fields working working the land. You know, it was a wonderful childhood. Um, but, yeah, I, I grew up in, the, in those cotton fields working with all the other workers, hoeing each, lo- each row of the field, uh, pulling the weeds, and each each row was about a half a mile long, and you would go all the way to the end of the row, and the one thing that was motivating you to get to the end of the row was that there was water, water. at the end, <laughs> and you, you were going to get to have a, a drink of water before you kept going, and it would be just super hot, and uh, the land is called buckshot, which is a certain type of clay, and it would just stick straight to your boots. And so you have like three or four pounds on each boot, and you'd be wearing jeans because there were snakes out there. Mm. But the heat would be, you know, 90 to 100 degrees out there, uh, and you're wearing big straw hats. And uh, it, was, it was an experience like none other, and it really teaches you the value of hard work and um, the respect of your peers, you know. So it was... And people who make a living that way. Yep. Picking cotton, hoeing cotton. My dad was a firm believer to make sure that we understood the value of a penny. And so he, he made, we, we made uh, the same amount that the, all the other workers made, which was $3.12 an hour. Mm. And uh, I did that for five years. And um, then you graduate and he'd trust you to work one of the tractors and you'd work on the combines and harvest as well and all the above. Really, really fun childhood. Sounds beautiful. Stephanie says, please come to beautiful downtown Fuquay, Verena, North Carolina. Any sunstruck autumn afternoon for some gorgeous historic 19th century commercial buildings on Main and Broad Street. Yeah, yeah. That sounds like fun to paint. It is. It's a nice area, beautiful area. I think I've driven through Fuquay pretty. You know who lives down there? Uh, Jason Clark, who was here last week. He lives yeah. nearby there. Nice. And there's a big mural in town there that he painted on, one of, on the side of the local brewery, I think. That's awesome. Yeah, it's not too far from here. We can make that happen. No. That's doable. Uh, 
Uh, Sean Kelly says he's currently working on a portrait commission. Awesome. And Judas says they're currently working on a painting of a yellow rose, though they cut a couple of hours ago and it's quickly changing. Yep, that can happen. That's why you paint those flowers first. That's great. Yeah, we would love to see those pieces that you guys are all working on. It's great. Marcella is still painting plein air in Ireland. Very mild, wet today. Got out to paint the ocean on Sunday. And a great time. That's awesome. Oh, I bet. That's amazing. The view of the ocean from Ireland is beautiful. Where in Ireland are they? Um, I believe she said Waterford. This is where I sh shoot over to using my flats. Let's see if I can come up with some flat brushes here. One of the things about painting landscapes that I find really fun, uh, if you choose to do it that way, is that I don't have to really worry too much about whether the colors that somebody is seeing in my painting are the colors that were there. Because mm. I get to... I get to, as a result, I get to push a lot of color into a painting often that's not, you know, that you don't see. Mm. I think that's awesome for people to hear too, because I think it can be, you know, really um, habitual for a lot of realists to try to be like very strict about matching colors perfectly to what they see, mm -hmm. because otherwise it's almost like quote unquote breaking the rules. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, being able to realize, like, no, if this is your painting. You can do what you want with it. You can it's change okay. the colors. You can push them this way or that way and change mm -hmm. the hues um, to make a more harmonious piece. It's absolutely, you know, important and often necessary. Mm. That's great advice. Key, key point. Uh, Pickles says they're working on painting the fish tank along for practice. That's cool. I'd love to see that. They're, they're painting the fish tank, uh, like observing the fish tank and painting it, or painting the actual fish tank? Yeah, I'm not sure if that means painting the tank or painting the fish. We'll have to find out. Pickles, you should send us a, a picture. We'd love to see it. Yeah, send it on the Discord if you're on it. Um, Emily is working on a pet portrait commission while watching and listening um, and waiting for the kids at school. Fairly productive 45 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Love seeing the progress on your paintings. Wow. Thank you so much, Emily. Yeah, yeah. sometimes painting is a multitasking process. <laughs> yes, it is. Especially when you have kids, you, it's, it's a challenge to find, you know, good solid time with the kids running around. You know, you have to be very intentional about your time. Lewis, when you said you, uh, you paint, you kind of establish the location mm -hmm. of the painting. When you paint, do you think, once you're after that spot, do you think... I now paint all around, I just kind of wander around, or do you like, oh, I always go to this spot here first? Oh, um, well, I don't know if I have a spot that I go first, but I definitely try to find, um, I used to paint sort of like at a focal point and then work my way outside out of the focal point, uh -huh. but now I've found that it's probably a faster process to paint multiple areas that have similar value color hue uh -huh. That oh, then then uh -huh. the co the color I have on uh -huh. my actual brush mm -hmm. because it helps it helps me not have to like continue to mix as much mix the paint yeah, yeah. so um, but it always ends up being a little bit of both you know because mm -hmm. something captures your eye yep and then I'm a bit a bit ADD about it so I'll go and like go to the shiny object syndrome when I'm not focused well enough and mm -hmm. and try to get the next little Thing, you know. I love those shiny objects. Oh man, don't we all?
But I do enjoy this, this stage of things because I'm kind of building up where what's in shadow, what's in light, but there's so much ambient light happening in the inside of these mm -hmm. roses mm -hmm. that there's a lot of color shifts and warm and cools happening. And so trying to capture those, a lot of fun. How do you use your brushes to your advantage, Lewis, when painting petals? So I'm always thinking about petals. One of the most important things to think about is edges. Um, how the edges are turning, which ones are sharp, which ones are soft, and how the petal turns away. And so almost always the edges will have a soft and a harder side to them. So whenever you make a mark, you need to always consider what is happening on the soft side of the edge and the hard side of the edge and making sure that that is very declared. Um, and that, like for example, this little petal I'm working on, the edge on the outside is gonna be hard. So I want to like make sure that that's being pushed on the hard side, but then on the, on the soft side, I'll go and get a little bit more of the color below and add a little bit of a softer edge to that bottom part. And that helps separate what's um, turning towards me or turning away from me. Um, and that just with roses, especially when you have all of these like multiple ed areas, if you can't determine what the edge is, that's an area that you can like abbreviate into being uh, a bunch of the same color, you know. So like for example, some of this in here, I'm, I'm trying to abbreviate a little bit to push cohesive color and then work on the edge quality on some of the things on the backside. That's awesome, thank you. Alyssa says, I love the misty atmosphere Gary has captured in the background. I feel like I'm there. You're not showing my pictures anyway, are you? <laughs> <laughs> Holy cow. You're doing great, Gary. Well, you awesome. Yeah, you guys both are. This is really fun to watch. I'm just messing with it. I'm trying to, trying to fool you all into thinking I can do this. <laughs> Gary's a modest guy. I feel like the two of you are definitely kindred spirits. Anything that sounds intelligent, I just stole it from Gary. <laughs> Emily asks, do you try to do each petal you're seeing or combine them and do general shapes? Um, like I will combine them if they're all clustered together and it's hard to understand the edge, the nature of the edges. So, but at the same time, if I, if I can see clearly where a, a pedal is supposed to go, then I'll, I'll definitely, uh, just in my painting style, I definitely want to paint it as I see it. Yeah. Um, yeah. But there's, there's always there's always a reaction to how the mark comes down. And this is something that goes back to like sometimes when, when Michael would sound cryptic that I think is very important for people to realize and what he would say. He would say something like, if you've painted something that feels truthful, but it isn't what you see, keep what you found to be truthful in your painting. Yeah. And so just to like clarify a little bit, anytime that you make a mark that is true to feeling like the flower, but it doesn't, it isn't exactly what you see, just keep it because it's part of your beauty of you making something that feels um, natural to your subconscious of how you painted it and uh, has a bit of your identity tied into it. And um, so that's why I sometimes will leave marks even if it isn't what, exactly what I see. 
if I feel like it is true to the nature of the flower. That's some good beatboxing you got going on there, Gary. Um, Stephanie was wondering again which yellows you used for the petal interiors. Um, I used Naples yellow, lemon yellow, uh, and alizarin. Um, alizarin, cremants white, the lake extra. Yeah, I like that. So um, they they together combined can create a really beautiful relationship in the color. Chasley says, I will be forever thankful to East Oaks. I've subscribed for a few years now and have watched every video some oh a few gosh. times. Well, I can't begin to tell you all how much I've improved. Well, That's awesome. Yay. That is, I mean, there's no better compliment than that. Thank you, because I, we want to be here for exactly you. Um, and so we're so thankful that you've enjoyed them. And at the same time, we thank you for being such a long supporting patron. You need to come visit us. Of course, I say that, and you know, it might be a little hard for someone to. It might be, yeah, yeah, exactly. But nice try. If you're in Australia, we'll come visit you. All right, Alyssa. <laughs> Alyssa has been one of our, our biggest fans and most devoted watchers this, in this whole process. So um, got, we've so enjoyed getting to know her. Hey, ever since Alex and Divya went, I have wanted to go to Australia and see it for myself. It looks beautiful. That's right. <laughs> she just commented in all caps, yes. <laughs> <laughs> East Oak Studio, the global tour. Yes. I need to always be mindful of my time so that I don't like I could spend just three hours on just this. Is it already three twenty? Isn't that something? Oh my gosh. I know, Gary. Time gotta, flies. You gotta pick up the speed here. You guys are just about at the halfway ish point. Okay, we're gonna just clean up a few things. Am I still putting my this in in the camera? No, you've been great. Okay, good. Uh, and also, like, if that's like feeling uncomfortable, like obviously not at all. You do you? No, if it was feeling uncomfortable, I'd move the camera. <laughs> you know, or I could I could move it if need be. Yeah. So, but it, as long as I'm not in the shot, and everybody can see, that's all I care about right at this moment. Gary, I love the vibration of um, these like really warm wheat grass colors and then the little specks of green that you've got going in there. It's beautiful. Thank you. I'll try to do it again someday. Let's see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> I'll find out what happened. Grew up on a farm, they tell me my grandfather say, even a blind squirrel can find a nut. So. I know. That's one of my favorite <laughs> quotes. I love that quote. My fiance once told me that quote, and I had never heard it. And I, I remember this because I actually wrote it down in my notes on my phone. Um, and then he followed up <laughs> with the statement, I'm the nut. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, then he found out, well, I found you. Right? <laughs> I was like, I'm going to make you a t-shirt that says that. <laughs> I'm trying to get a little cool down in here against all these warms in that field. You know, they're coming down off the hill. I planned on it, so I put some thick paint in and then I'm painting back over top of it. So I was thinking about it might get there eventually. Yeah. Probably could be a lot a lot lighter, I think. In a minute, the paint will weigh about 60 pounds. <laughs> but that's okay. Then I could say I planned the impasto. There you go. Actually, I really am trying to just keep it really thick. 
trying not to, you know, just be stingy with the paint. Yep. You gotta have paint to paint. You gotta have paint to paint. Some some truth bombs being That's dropped. That's been a hard here. thing to learn. Yeah. To, you know, really trust that you could put thick paint on and it would actually come out looking like <laughs> kind of roughly what you were thinking about, you know. Mm -hmm. That's nice, except for now. It's too much of that, so I need to have something that can kind of break that up. That's not in the painting, but I'm just going to put it here anyway. Another tip on painting flowers, if you're having a hard time making the right edges, I would, I would recommend using one of Rosemary's comb, comber brushes. They're flats and um, they kind of go to a razor's edge and they're really good at like helping you be clarify a certain edge in a certain spot. So, um, but you have to have paint, enough paint down in order to like comb stuff over. And um, that, that would be the problem I think a lot of people have where I've had the comment, you know, that painting with combers is like painting with a, limp, uh, a wet noodle. And that can, it can be like that if you don't have enough paint already down to like work with, so. Yeah, like it has to be thick enough in order for you to leave an impression of those um, bristles, you know? Right. Hmm. I have some Eclipse combers from them that I love, love, love. They're so nice. I use them. Oh. I like those. Uh, Marcella says, I'm the same watching East Oaks on and off for a long time. I have learned so much that being, I've learned so much that being self-taught can be a lonely place. Thank you. Oh, yeah, it can be a lonely place. That's, I've been in that lonely place before. Reminds me of being self-taught. Sometimes people will ask me, uh, like, especially if they're like thinking about buying a painting or something, I'll be painting and saying, how much is that painting? And I always give so the same answer. I said, well, are you asking or are you buying? Because <laughs> <laughs> that's just because I'm going to tell you, it took me about 20 years to paint this painting. There you go. That's right. So they won't be really shocked when I tell them what I'm selling it for. Well, I think, you know, coming from that lonely place is something that, as artists, a lot of us can relate to. And, yeah. Um, that's why we love doing this so much, is just kind of breaking the mold and, yeah. um, you know, fostering community. It's so important. Yeah. Yes, it is. Well said, Evie. This is, a, this is a side advertisement coming up, so stand by. Not for me. I, I was uh, watching the news this morning and they were interviewing David Brooks, who's one of my favorite commentators. So, and he has just written a book called uh, "How to Get to Know Someone." Mm. And I've been sort of in the business of relational communication stuff for fifty years. What he said in eight minutes was probably the most profound teaching I've heard in all those years. Wow! And I ordered twenty-eight books right on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. <laughs> because I, I'm going to be at a little get-together in a weekend with some friends, and I'm going to give every one of them that book. That's, oh, that's awesome. It is, it, it is uh, I, I highly recommend it. It comes out tomorrow. Actually, gets published tomorrow. And it is an extraordinary, what he, how he's teaching about communication with people is just fantastic. Well, that's wonderful, Gary. I'll have to check that out. No extra charge for that. East Oaks Book Club. East Oaks Book Club. Probably should have one. Actually, we're we're working on something similar to that right now. Mm -hmm. It's in it's in the works. Stay tuned. Stay <laughs> tuned. I don't want to give away that marketing secret there, so let that fly. <laughs> All right, so that I don't, I need to get every, all the other flowers kind of up to speed, I'll, I'm going to let this one alone for a, for a hot second and um, work on some of these other flowers. So, I 
and see if I can get them to a similar resolve so that at least by the time we're done, there'll be somewhat of a balanced painting. Because you don't want me to finish before you do. <laughs> <laughs> no, Gary, I have flowers waiting for you if you finish early. <laughs> Right now, I'm just imagining what this might look like if I ended up painting it right. <laughs> if I ended up painting it right? Yeah. That's such a funny thing. I, can I ask what you mean by that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I am imagining. I have in my head what it will look like before I start. Mm. I mean, I kind of know what, I'm look, or what I want to see happen. And then I just start painting. I, I paint pretty intuitively. You know, I mean, like I'm, if I'm in this spot here, I start painting and I think, oh, what would, what would look good against that? How would that work? You know, so I'm making, a, you know, vibration marks, I call them, you know, little, um, does this look good against that color? And the value, does the value work? Yeah. And, I, and I, I've got a pretty simple palette, the red, yellow, blue. <laughs> so I can't go way out of harmony, you know. So yeah, that's kind of, it's good. I feel like that's something that is maybe relatable for a lot of people. It's like, am I doing this the right way or the wrong way? And um, I think the answer to that is yes. <laughs> yes to both. I mean, there yeah, sometimes, yes to both. <laughs> sometimes there isn't a right or wrong way. I think yeah. usually there isn't. It's um, the only wrong way to paint is by not painting. Yeah, there yeah. you go. That's a great statement right there. I like that. These are looking great, you guys. This is really well, exciting to see these coming to life. I made a choice to like make a few edges in the inside of the flower before I moved on. So going against my, uh, we always joke that we'll say whatever we declare, we end up <laughs> doing just the do. uh, yeah. <laughs> we just do the other thing. Uh, so if I'm like, oh, I'm gonna go spend some time on some other sections and all of a sudden I'm like, oh, I got to do that and I got to do this. But just wanted to spend a little time getting a couple of edges in the inside of this flower. Um, We'll come back again. Okay. All right, let's go to the next the next guy. The next supporting actor. Yes, the next supporting actor. The fun thing about this one is it's a bit in shadow, so there's like this transitionary period where these colors come into play. <laughs> oh, that's how I feel. Yeah. <laughs> I was talking then, and I kind of wasn't paying what to what I did. And I yeah, it's a juggling act, isn't it? To, to talk and paint. I was just painting away, and all of a sudden, wait, 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 I didn't mean that to happen. <laughs> yeah, this is, by the way, this is Gary's debut on camera. So he's uh, doing he's, great. He's isn't doing he? isn't he? fabulous. <laughs> Never again. Everybody's oh, yeah, what are you Gary. talking about? You're doing fabulous. You, don't sell yourself short. You're doing great. I think, uh, let's see if I can get it right this time. That might earn a round of applause. <laughs> Okay, got it. Gary, you didn't hear it, but we have <laughs> we have all these like now sound effects that we uh, can. So uh -oh. you just got a round of applause. <laughs> this is filmed in front of a live studio audience, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> and they're a pretty tough group too. <laughs> Hot, tough crowd, tough crowd. I'm actually working on the key to my painting right now. So if this doesn't work, then the whole painting is a a bomb. Well, make sure that works, Gary. I'm working on it. It is actually to me the piece that I'm most interested in getting right. Oh, yeah. 
Mm. Kind of like the make it or break it moment. That was it right there. There it went. Did you make it or break it? He made oh. it, folks. Hey. Leave that there. This is such a great painting, this, these flowers for Stool of Shame Day, because when you start getting into the details of it, that makes you want to, like, get in, you know. This is, uh, so this is going to, as, as things progress, it's going to be a fun challenge to make sure I stay, stay back, because in order to create some of the sharp edges, it's like, you know, you want to kind of, like, go in and work through them, but you can, you can totally do it from back here. Do you find that the maintaining that distance from uh, your panel also causes you to squint more? Yeah, I think it does, actually. That's almost a question for you. Does it look like I'm squinting more? <laughs> um, I just know that that happens with me. When it, I'm, absolutely. When I remember to maintain distance, I do naturally... I'm naturally inclined to squint more than maybe I would if I was like right up on my canvas. Yeah, which is exactly what you should be doing, you know? So that's a good, that's a good sign. <laughs> oh my gosh, uh, Benjamin says, Gary is my dad's name, which is why your landscape seems disappointed in me. <laughs> eh. <laughs> but I'm bummed. Funny. He was disappointed in my, in my landscape, she said. No, 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 no. Uh, just a joke. <laughs> it was just a joke saying that Gary's his dad's name, mm -hmm. and that's why the painting feels disappointed to him. <laughs> <laughs> I like your paintings. <laughs> Positive reinforcement. That's it. I haven't said that I'm having fun yet, but I've thought it about 20 times and trying to like hold off, you know, I was so that it has a little bit more impact, you. you know. Guys, this is so much fun. <laughs> Gary, we've been teasing Lewis a little bit because he says that probably like 20 times every stream. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. Everybody's having fun. It's great. Everybody's having fun. Just pushing out the uh, power of positivity vibes. Woo. Hey, a little positivity goes a long way. I amen to that. Especially when painting. I know there's been so many moments when I'm here struggling and working on something and I'm just fighting it and feeling like, oh, gosh, I can't get this right. And, you know, either... Lewis or Tina or Erica or, or Liv will come up and encourage me, and I'm just like, all right, yeah, I got this. Um, yeah, a little positivity goes a long way. So if you are out there right now painting by yourself, I will give you that positivity. You got this. That's it. Good grief. I mean, I don't even know what I'm doing when I'm here. <laughs> Whatever, Gary. <laughs> It's looking beautiful. I really love these like purpley tones that you've included in the shadows on the rocks. Yeah, it's looking excellent. There's some beautiful color vibrations going on there. Walk away from the painting. <laughs> Alyssa says, doesn't it feel like we're all sitting out plein air painting with two blokes shooting the breeze? Yes. Loving the relaxed vibe. Ah, oh, see? That's the best. It is the best. No. <laughs> Speaking of relaxed vibes. <laughs> now that I think about it. Okay, what are we trying to do here? Been completely lost. I think I want to, even though it's not warm, I want to warm it up a little bit. Yeah, 
ما بيقوموا And so when you want it warmer, don't put blue in it like I just did. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking about there. Maybe I want to see what this does. Yeah, there you go. That's the color I was looking for. This is exactly what goes on in my head all the time, you know. It's the conversation you're having. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Stupid, no, no. No, this. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is why I listen to metal music when I paint. <laughs> That's it. I do think when I'm painting, even like when I have a big open space, my mind is immediately thinking, okay, don't paint too far of that same color. You know, mm. change, change everything. Change, change the stroke movement, the, how I put it down, you know, mm. what I add to it. Even if it doesn't look like, oh, that doesn't make sense. I stick it in. Well, it worked okay. If it doesn't, it's oil. Yep. Kind of developing a language of space and like how that communicates through your brush strokes. And yeah, your colors I mean, I'm thinking you know, like as I'm moving near this little purple thing here that I made, that rock. I think, well, I'm just going to make. I know my photograph doesn't show the land being you know warm, but I'm going to make a little yellow green right there near that thing. So I think it'll work. I think mm -hmm. it'll make it look nice, and it did. I think. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's awesome. So I'm, I am just thinking about the little, you know, that little color vibration thing we talked about earlier. Yep. Well, and I love getting to kind of hear you talk your way through moments like this because it shows everybody like there's so much room for spontaneity when painting, even if you're painting from a photo reference. I feel like yeah. um, it can be tricky painting from photos because a lot of people feel restricted. Yeah. Um, but. Let serendipity be your guide and, you know, trust your gut. I think that's really, really powerful. And definitely paint a, draw a bunch of pictures before you start. There you go. Mm. That's, I think that's the big key is the, is the placement of what's important to you. Have you got it placed in a way that somebody else will see it and enjoy it? And painting restores people's souls. Yep. It gives them life. Mm. Gary's, who helped us also make our vision statement, which is, is restoring hope through beauty. That's it's, um, part of Gary's DNA in there. Well, and I would certainly say that you guys have achieved that, and we all see you striving to achieve it every day. Yeah, those guys are good, man. It's beautiful. All of them are good. They're good artists. Us, us folks can learn so much from them. I mean, you can sit and watch an Aline Basa or something like that for, for six hours straight. Yeah. <laughs> and my wife says, what, what are you doing? I said, I'm watching Elaine. She's my girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, <laughs> Well, when you're done with your girlfriend, come up for dinner. <laughs> yeah, that is often the problem, coming up for dinner. I get too, get too, uh, get too involved. Okay, let me do this. Let me just do this a little bit. It should better. be illegal having this much fun. And, you know, getting paid for it like I am today, that's what's really awesome. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I can assure you that the viewers heat, probably don't instance. realize how much I get paid for this. <laughs> <laughs> what a deal. This is hard to do, what I'm trying to do. Mm -hmm. You know, you're painting into wet. Yep. And so I have some warm undertones, but I want to, to kind of put this cool green over top of it. Mm -hmm. And trying to keep my hand, you know, just loose enough to be able to get it there so I don't have to, like, paint a wall. Yeah. Just leave that idea that green is in there. I don't know if it's working or not. But. I like to see the grip of your brush too when you mm -hmm. try to maintain that looseness. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's really balance. Really cool. Just balancing yeah. it in your hand. Letting the brush do the work. 
Oh, that was a nice little shot right there. That's an accident right there. There are no accidents. There's only happy mistakes. <laughs> well, what plan. was it? Happy? There's no, mis no mistakes. There's only happy accidents. I can't tell you. I planned that. That's what it was. Bob Ross. I heard that a lot growing up. <laughs> <laughs> So, Louis, in painting this second flower, mm -hmm. um, it's a bit of a different process because you've got this cast shadow kind of coming in from the first. Um, how do you wrangle communicating that, casting light over the form while also trying to maintain um, the form of the flower itself? Um, you know how we've talked often about you start with the big shapes when you're blocking in? and you work your way down to the smaller shapes when you're drawing, it's a, a drawing thing. Um, the same applies to color relationships. So like establishing the shadow before you actually get into the, the flower itself can help aid in context for creating those subtleties later when you're getting more of the details in. And because you're working wet into wet, it's easier to get those details closer to accurate because of that. Um, I think that that was what you were asking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so. And... Um, also, because I will eventually kind of deepen things up, but I want to keep sort of the beauty of the flower's lightness, like the local, the local color's lightness in relationship to the background. Um, so there's, a, there's like a, a push between trying to create the background separation with the flower so that the flower rings be like beautiful as a luminous quality, but at the same time, making sure that there is a connectivity to the background, you know, as well. So, and, and so it's, it's different people will create more or less separation based off of that. Let's see. I don't know why I'm holding two. Um, I, I did notice that. I wasn't <laughs> going to say anything. <laughs> it's just called being subconscious and not like paying attention. <laughs> just hey, auto, you're focused. Being <laughs> autopilot and subconscious here. Paper towels aplenty. For um, those out there who may uh, struggle to find a good brand of paper towels uh, for painting, um, I know some people like to use, you know, like different cloths and stuff. Sometimes I actually use like cut up old uh, t shirt rags, like jersey knit fabric, because um, it doesn't pill very easily. But the brand of paper towels that we use in studio um, that we personally like is one that you can find in the US that's called Viva, V-I-V-A. Um, and it's a 100% cotton paper towel um, that really doesn't like pill or anything like that. It's almost more like, it feels a little bit more like fabric than paper really. Mm. Um, and it works really nicely. You don't get a bunch of like, you know, random little fuzzies on your brush. Um, yeah, it's really great. That's what I use. Hmm? That's what I use. Yeah, it's you're just. But then I cut use. mine in half. I always fold mine. I don't. I'm like weirdly. I cut mine all frenetic like this. about that. Yeah. I roll yeah. them out and cut them in half. There you go. And then I then I stupidly bunch it all up in a hand. 
<laughs> and, and only use a little tiny bit of the middle and throw it away. So it's, I can't break. It's a habit I'm unable to break. I, I'm, I'm a captive. A really bad habit there. Well, whatever you're doing, Gary, it's working. All right, we're going to put a few light marks in here and then move on to the next flower. Hopefully I can get through a decent amount of this I'm, painting. This is a race, actually. I'm, I'm, I'm racing you. Oh! <laughs> well, you're going to win. You that, guys are both putting in some lights right now. I heard, I heard, I heard it was like a, a bonus prize if you finish first, and so <laughs> like I've, been, I've been like going like crazy. Bragging rights. I'm trying oh, to lighten the time. sky right down at the bottom here as it goes down. Just to create a little more atmosphere there. Just a tiny bit more. <sighs> Boom. Did you get it? Well, no, I'm not done, but I mean, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Let me find my brush. I think, I'm let me scroll back up for a second. Somebody, I believe earlier, had a comment about habit formation, like good building good habits. Whoops. <laughs> right after I just confessed that I had a bad habit. Um, let me see. Let me see if I can find it. Okay, let's see if we can make this. Yeah, let me see. Stephanie says neuroplasticity stays twenty one days to says twenty one days to establish a new habit. You have created a new habit of having fun at your easel. So there you go. Twenty one days. Yeah, no, hey, ready. see that's that's why we made the whole East Oaks October. Uh, 21 days Breaking or 20 days. Habits. It's your it's your it's your responsibility to do that last one day. Just <laughs> <laughs> doesn't feel very organic. Every now and again, I have to like readjust all of my brushes to not be so much like a claw. And to go all in here like this. Yeah, what, you're holding, what, like 10 right now? Uh, let's see, three, six, seven, seven. Seven. Enough. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you need some more. You know, it's, a com it's like a comfort blanket, you know? <laughs> <laughs> if only you had a third arm that could just be responsible for holding them all. You're like yeah, right. A, you should have a comfort animal. You bring your dog in here. Yep. Rosie definitely is our support, do our emotional support in this group. The truth be told, she's the best painter of us all. <laughs> that would be cute to try to like get her paw print. Yo, yeah. You see the picture that Jason did of his dog yesterday? No. Yeah, he's, he did a little, he's teaching his kids mm -hmm. how to paint. Oh yeah, he did tell me that. So he did a lesson on form yesterday with them and he was showing them how to paint form. Well, isn't that awesome? That was pretty fun. Moon asks, guys, could you give some kind of advice to someone who hasn't painted or drawn for a few years and now feels desperate thinking that he can't paint and draw anymore as he used to? Draw. Yeah, the, the, be <laughs> the best thing I can tell you to do is to get yourself just in front of the easel and try something. Not, right. It doesn't matter what it is. You got to promise yourself that you got to do 15 minutes of something and you don't have to finish it, you just gotta start it. And because I have found, in, at least in my own experience, that most of my people's issues are the fear of starting um, because of maybe failure or whatever it might be. I'm not even really sure sometimes what it is, but if my, the days that I almost feel like I don't know where to start, and I just say, you just got to start and just do something. Yeah. Those are the days that I find myself to be the most successful. So I hope that is 
helpful for you because it's been very helpful for me. When I was in uh, art school, and I was actually studying ceramic sculpture um, and not painting and um, really missing it, I had a daily practice of uh, doing like 30 minute little gouache studies every day in my sketchbook um, for that same purpose. Um, yeah, and it really, awesome. really does help. I, re I love painting in gouache. It's so it's nice. Really fun. It's is, so buttery. Yeah. Uh, this is a little gouache painting I did. Oh, that was gouache. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. Wait, yeah. let's see. Can you hold that up in front of, uh, in front of your of. current painting so that folks can see? In front of. Yeah, no, or you know, <laughs> just like that. Where was that supposed to be? <laughs> what did you say? Right in front what? of Louis' face. <laughs> Where do you want to hold it? Just in front of the painting you're working on a little painting. bit, just okay. so people can see. Yeah, that's great. So that's a gouache sketch that Gary did. Yeah, it's a little six by eight. And then I, I glued it on the back of a piece of, of a mat board. Nice. And yeah, that's I'll, awesome. And then I'll just, I do a bunch of those and then I like give them away to people. You know, they're fun. You know, somebody says, oh, you're a painter. I say, oh, I have a painting for you. And you give it to them. Because it like take, you know, 20 minutes to do them. That's awesome. That's you got your Christmas gifts lock and, locked and loaded already. Yeah. Ready to go. That's honestly like actually pretty good advice. I feel like every year around the holidays, I always feel so much pressure, like, that everybody expects something handmade from me. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, of course, like, that's not true. Like, everybody understands, like, you know, yeah. time time is the biggest, you know, material yeah. that you can work with. Um, but I just, I don't know. I always hold myself to the standard of, like, I have to make things for people every year during the holidays. Mm -hmm. And um, I do a little. <laughs> yeah, if you. <laughs> Three by five with wash studies of, of a rose, you know. Just there you go. A picture yeah. of roses. That's perfect. It's a good time investment in more ways than one. I think gouache, more so than acrylic, um, just as like a, a paint to sketch with, yeah. translates uh, well towards working with oil. Uh -huh. yes. um, I find that um, the viscosity of it and the opacity and the um, just the mechanics of how the paint handles and also um, how how much more high chroma you can get yep. um, really translates more into oil painting than acrylics. So if anybody out there is interested in kind of doing a daily sketch practice for that purpose, I would probably recommend doing gouache rather than acrylic. Good. Thought. Love that. I want to get back into doing ballpoint pen sketches. I used to do that all the time, and I haven't in mm. eons. That sounds so fun. It, it is like, don't they have like an Inktober thing? Inktober, yeah. Yeah, I've never done it before. Um, just because I've, I've never really had the time, but maybe next year I'll get my act together and plan for it ahead of time. So one thing I'm working on here is making sure that the shadows have a bit more of a cooling effect in, in color relationship to things in the light. So if you can't, if you feel like your light areas aren't getting warm enough, it could be, or, or chromatic enough in their relationship with uh, the rest of the painting, then it could be that you don't have the relationships of the cool next to it working as well as it could. So just going through and um, simplifying a few areas and seeing if I can get it a little lower in volume, a little, little cooler in temperature. There we go. 
And just so y'all know, we are at four o'clock. Perfect. I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> no, Finished. <laughs> I could paint for another couple of hours on this probably. But I don't think I need to. I think I'd probably ruin it. But well, if you know you, what you have. Fun, the one thing would be fun is for you to give a good critique of this painting right now. And I have thick skin and don't really care. <laughs> so if you feel like you'd like to critique it and that would be part of the show, then you feel free. Well, I think you're doing an excellent job and we can totally do that if, uh, if I get myself to the right position okay. in this piece. But um, as of right now... I know you feel bad because I, first, I won. But. Right, exactly. That, <laughs> you're right. <laughs> you know, why should I critique the master <laughs> over, over there? Because the longer I sit here, the more I explore what I could do. Yeah, vocalize that. Tell tell people what you're thinking. Well, I have all these little colors in here, and uh, so I'm trying to get you know some complementary colors at the same value in some of my yellows, so they're just not quite as chromatic in the painting because the painting is a pretty atmospheric painting, and so I'm trying to knock that yellow down just a tiny bit. I feel like it was a little bit much when I look back at it. I thought, who did that? <laughs> and so by putting a little bit of the, in this case, a little kind of a violet color in there. <laughs> a violet or a violent? <laughs> well, kind of. Maybe both. <laughs> yeah, maybe both. Violet can be kind of a violent color. Yeah. It's not much, but just a little bit there. Even that just kind of knocked that down a little bit and made that. I want this part here to kind of connect to the, to the sea a little bit more than it is. I'm trying to get it down a little bit more in value, closer to the, even though it probably isn't really. So I'm just trying to break it. It's like if I was looking at it and, you know, and I'm looking mm -hmm. and somehow or another the, you know, it's far enough away that it, uh, it looks like it's, you know, not solid, but, it, but you're almost like a heat wave or mm -hmm. whatever. You know, mm -hmm. sometimes that creates that. So I was trying to make that look that way. Maybe that would be kind of interesting. Hmm. I'm say it a different way. I'm just trying to get this edge on that peninsula, not making your eye go stick out there. <laughs> <laughs> Anna says that dioxazine violet with quinacridone red is a violent violet. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Okay. Trying to think some color, trying to make this rock here kind of come down a little bit, just making the land go down. I'll just form a stroke down so it just says the land's coming down that way. But now that I did, I have to darken the back side of it because it's, it's weird. Trying to darken the back side, get everything in that. Now it almost looks like it is. Yeah, that's better. Goes back into the, still doesn't go far enough back. I want it to go further back into the picture. And it disappears and kind of, it's connected, you know, uniform. Mm. Yeah. All right, something I'm going to do real quick also is I'm going to just add a little bit of cooler blue into the. Background, not a lot, but just I a little bit. Fans. Okay, that looks weird right there. You see that? Yeah, I do. Hmm? All of a sudden, my water got going downhill. I need to get it up like this. I need to move it up. Marcella says, I'm thinking of adding cobalt violet light to my palette. Oh, beautiful color. I put that on my cereal in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. 
<laughs> outstanding <laughs> breakfast food. <laughs> that should have been Wheaties slogan. Yep. <laughs> breakfast of champions right there. Cobalt Violet. <laughs> It'll set you free. Okay. That was more better. Yeah, I haven't really messed with my trees much since I started, so maybe I could run them. Mm, I, I, I'm having a hard time not saying it again. <laughs> Just do it. Yeah, this is so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> we should have taken bets to see. We need to do uh, like, like a, a kind of like a blooper reel. <laughs> But just of me being like, I'm having fun. God, this is fun. Is this fun? Well, I'm wait. having a good time. Stay tuned, everybody. We're, <laughs> if Lewis doesn't edit that, I will edit that for him. <laughs> there will be a blooper reel for this. <laughs> Actually, Lewis has a pretty exciting video coming out pretty soon. Uh, do you want to talk about that, Lewis? Yeah, I'm working on, uh, this is going to be the next thing I work on as soon as we're done with East October, is uh, a self-portrait video cool. where um, I walk through the entire stage of my process with, with um, the self-portrait I finished last year. So mm -hmm. uh, I recorded the whole thing. It's a, it's a bear of editing to go through but once it's done that's the goal it'll be on the platform with the rest of our videos and we'd love to share it with you can't wait having had the the pleasure of getting to watch lewis create this painting uh in real time in person i must say i cannot wait to see this video Really, really incredible, you guys. Really hope it turns out. And, and, you know, I've gone through about a third of the footage and everything seems okay so far. You know, um, just hope there's no um, scary little pitfalls in there that, um, you know, create setbacks, which happens sometimes in film. You'll just have that like paranormal activity moment where you forgot to turn off the camera one night and then we see Mr. Bones moving around in the background. Yeah, right. That would, oh, that would be wild. <laughs> I wish I didn't come... say that. Now I'm going to be afraid of that. <laughs> now I might, I might, uh, I might never come back down to the dungeon. <laughs> and if you don't know yet that we call my studio the dungeon because it's complete with skeletons. And, and no windows. And no windows. It's all concrete. <laughs> and underground. And underground. Even though I try to create the lighting to feel very much not underground, it is definitely underground. But no, it's honestly, it's a lovely space. It's a perfect place if we have a major storm coming through. It makes a great storm shelter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So, Lewis, I'm noticing kind of a fun um, characteristic with these roses where it's almost like each one has its own personality and its mm -hmm. shape and geometry where the first one is very like kind of, you know, more circular, more balanced. The second one is kind of like a little bit squat and elliptical based on its angle. And now this one is not quite as opened up. It's a little bit uh, taller. Um, do you think... Do you think about like kind of the character of these as you're painting, or are you really just trying to match what you see? Uh, actually, that's such a great point, and you know, and it's something that I think you and I've talked about before. But I think the audience would would be great for the audience to know. Is like I often when I'm thinking of shape, I put emotion to it, and so like if I'm like, hey, this this 
to help me get more ac not only accurate but uh, sort of creating spirit in a piece, I think about the shape of the objects as emotion where I'm like, this feels a bit more sad or this feels a little bit more uh, protected or timid or, you know, and by adding that emotion to it, it gives me a, a new perspective um, slash maybe even paradigm of how to approach the flower. So, um, you know, when the flower is a bit more closed, for example, this, this feel, it feels a bit more guarded. Um, but because he's above everyone else, it also feels like maybe it's, it's trying to like, it's trying to grab attention from the viewer, but protect itself from the other ones, you know? So I am thinking about things in a relationship of those concepts and it kind of helps in a way it kind of helps the painting have more f like life and purpose behind how why you paint what you're painting you know so and the and the interesting thing is is then there's like uh, a good opportunity for uh, a good art term juxtaposition um, where it's fighting to get attention, but I'm also creating it to have softer edges. So uh, the softer edges and sort of the glow of it help kind of push it back into space. Um, and so each one then ha carries its own separate personality while still keeping the ones up in the front, forefront more dominant in, in um, the relationship. Man, this makes me wonder why I don't paint more flowers. Mm. I think the one you're working on right now looks kind of hopeful. I think that's the emotion I would Ooh, just hopeful. put to it. Yeah, because it's like kind of like, it. it's not quite fully open, but it's getting there and it's looking up towards the sky and it's kind of like, yeah, it's hopeful. <laughs> I, I love it. Excuse me for two minutes. Second. Of course. Call my daughter right quick. Yep, yep. Daughter's call, I always answer. There you go. Good dad right there. Yeah, when I'm working on, I want to create each one to have its own separate hey. identity for sure. Oh. Yeah. I'm sorry, you were this calling? Oh, okay, Gary, you're uh, <laughs> mute him there. Uh, nope. I'm going to talk to him around. I was going to talk to him. This yep. Got it. Sorry, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Whoopsie. Yeah, yeah, I think there's kind of a, a fun sort of narrative process or like, I mean, I, I think if you think about it like spiritually almost, there's a sort of sense of animism um, mm. behind ascribing emotion to objects that we paint. Um, whether or not they're, you know, living objects like flowers or just inanimate quote unquote objects like, you know, stuff lying around your house or antiques or, you know, a cup or whatever. Um, I think there's something really beautiful in, in that process of storytelling. Um, even if, you know, as the artist, you choose not to tell anybody about it and, and, mm -hmm. you know, the after fact, but I think, um, I think it can really add an extra layer of value and meaning, uh, to the work that's really compelling. Yeah, totally. Ladies and gentlemen, how much do y'all enjoy Evie being behind the mic? She always has such wonderful insights, huh? A great commentator. She Aww. does so good. Thanks, you guys. It was a beautiful insight. I am having fun. <laughs> Join the club, Gary. I'm in the club. I'm in the happy club. The happy, have fun club. And if we lose any any uh, people on our live stream, they're like, oh, he just says that too much. Well, you can you can 
have fun. Don't let the door hit you on the way out. <laughs> That's fine with me. Go, go, uh, go somewhere else. Only fun in the happy fun club. Yes. Be, be in the unhappy club. Yep. There's Although plenty think, of people there, so. I think uh, that can come maybe with a little footnote, which is that, honestly, if you do this every single day, not every single day oh, is, good you know, happy fun club time. There's some tough days sometimes. And I think whenever the tough days find you, um, it's really important to just remember to push through and keep going and don't give up. That's so good. Mm. Good point. I decided to add a third tree in here. It was down in here, a bush, tree, whatever. It was much darker so that I could set the other two trees off a little bit better. Mm, I love that color, Gary. I really am getting close to being done. Well, that's great. And I win. Yeah. Yes, you win. <laughs> you win the grand prize. Just, that was the whole point. I just wanted to win. <laughs> I think anybody that picks up a paintbrush today is automatically a winner. That's right. Okay, okay go ahead and destroy my philosophy. <laughs> <laughs> I know you did not want me to win. I can tell right now. Oh, no, you're a winner, Gary. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you got to be careful how funny you are, Gary. You might be asked back. Yeah. I'll come back in a heartbeat. This is too much fun. <laughs> Actually, this kind of stuff surprisingly enough, uh, makes you better. Yep. Because it really challenges the heck out of you. You know, I kind of got to, you know, you, I got to keep my level of concentration high. Yep. Yeah, man, it keeps your, it keeps your mind sharp because you're answering questions and you're, you're talking through things and it's like juggling, you know. You, it's like juggling on a unicycle. <laughs> Reese says, those petals look almost as good as his beard. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you on both accounts. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> oh, oh, wait a minute. When I grow a beard, it looks like a dog with a mange. <laughs> it comes out like yellow and gray and empty spots and everything. You're like, somebody shoot him, he's sick. <laughs> My brother has brown hair, but his beard is red. I always thought that was really funny. Uh, the rest of my family, that's the way it, theirs is. He has, they all have brown hair, but their beards are red. I'm one in the group that doesn't have that. Instead, I have a bit of gray. It's okay, I like my gray. You know, I'm not sure if Louie's gonna include this in his self-portrait video or not, but <clears throat> a year ago he claimed that he was growing his beard specifically for this painting. Well, here we are, folks. <laughs> that year has well passed, hasn't it? <laughs> the beard grew on him just a little bit. Yeah, oh. in more ways than one. Yep, sorry. Got to get my puns in there while I can. Yep. In case somebody asks, if they're watching, particularly, I find, in doing perspective, your finger is really great for dragging across the painting. Yes, um, a lot a lot of people love to use their fingers. Uh, Josh Larocque was a real big proponent to using his fingers in his work. Oh, yeah. And uh, and we, the only reason I've never done it is because I you can I I'm scared. No, <laughs> that's not that's not the case. I think it's it's uh, been slightly fearful because I work with lead white so much. Mm -hmm. the, to yeah. getting it all washed off my fingers yeah. afterwards. Breakfast, breakfast cereal. Yeah, breakfast cereal <laughs> material, exactly. Yeah, get this sable brush. Quiet it down here and come in here and just touch it. Without picking up the paint. Alyssa says, Erica mentioned a book called Carlson's Guide to Landscape Painting. Yeah. 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 In it, he says to feel each mark as you make it, feeling the truth of each mark. Very mm. similar to what you all are saying. Yep. That's a perfect um, analogy. Yeah. 
I'm going to have to remember that tomorrow, Alyssa. <laughs> <laughs> It's going to be an exciting day tomorrow, everyone. We're going to be working with our, we're going to be working with doing only one brush mark before you go back to your palette and get some more paint. Oh, that's awesome. And it is going to be a wild and crazy day. It's actually a bit of advice that uh, Tyler Berry gave me. Um, when he and Chelsea were here back, I think in February or January, mm -hmm. um, he was talking about uh, GCA. Um, they have this very rigorous, strict process of mix, dip your brush in your palette, make a mark, step back, mix, rinse and repeat. Um, and that's very much not how I paint, typically, um, left to my own devices. So yeah, it'll be fun tomorrow. I'm excited. Well, I can guarantee you it'll be fun. Because <laughs> <laughs> we do fun. <laughs> because so far, I have discovered that every day has been fun. I continue to noodle until I ruin it. Whenever I find that I'm noodling, I focus on my edge work because there's always a place that you can improve the edge work. Good point. And then you'll find that there's, oh, I could do this and I could do that and then I could do this. And it's up making for a great situation to happen. Set you up for some success. I think one stroke and I'm done. One stroke and you're the done. The final stroke, folks. I think I see. Final it. stroke. Then the rest of the time you can tell stories and hang out. Answer all these questions. You did it, Gary! Yay, Gary! Yay. Is the list finished? <laughs> no, you won. I won. You won. <laughs> oh, let's, let's have a call my wife. So I've got I've gotten more phone calls today while we've been doing this live stream than I typically do. You I'm so popular because people are encouraging you because I'm fast and you. Were <laughs> yeah. And John said, "Hurry up! Hurry up, Lewis! He's winning." <laughs> Gary, well, you're not fun. competitive at all. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Gary is so much fun to have game nights with. His, his, <laughs> not his, even joking. Here's a brush that I haven't used yet, so I should probably try to do that. Gary, the next Duke UNC game, I'm going to watch it with you. Uh, I feel like that'd be fun. Yeah, that's some raw, <laughs> that's some raw passion right there. <laughs> yeah, that's some... Yeah, that's real passion. I know I shouldn't do that, but I'm going to do it just because I said I was done, and now I decided I'm not... I realized I could, I could kind of cut underneath some of these things and set them down a little better. All right. Well, on this last 30 minutes, I'm going to try to like actually race in and kind of put a little bit of extra stuff down lower so that everyone can at least see that. And then I'll keep working on it, um, and I'll post the results of the painting afterwards. Um, to also, the Discord? Yeah. Mm hmm on the Discord. So if you're not part of our Discord, join the community. Share um, your work. Am I on the you Discord? You know, no. we have a critique spot. You can go in. It's free to join. Um, it's, it's for the purpose of continuing to push forward and build um, an East Oaks community because that has always been the heart of our, of our vision. Yeah, I know uh, we have a couple of folks who just joined today. Um, which is really exciting. I'm looking forward to getting to see everybody on there. Um, and Reese is asking, what's the name of the Discord? Louis. East Oak Studio. I will. And it's a, there's a link in the description below if you're on YouTube uh, where you can, you should be able to join from that location. Let me see. 
perhaps like some of you guys out there, um, I am new to Discord um, and honestly still kind of learning my way around it. Um, so I'll learn with you. Um, I'm just gonna create some more space. On Discord, we also have the hashtag East October. Mm -hmm. You can look up. <sighs> All right. So I'm going to quickly put in a little bit of this warmth of this table. And I am, at this moment, purposefully neutralizing the color just a little bit more than what I see up, up there because I think that it might, I don't want it to distract from my flowers. I didn't like that empty space up there. I moved it. Now. Not trying to get anything perfect yet, and just trying to get it down for context for the bowl. You sure you're not trying to win? Yeah, not trying to. <laughs> I'm always trying to win, uh, Gary. Yeah. Always. <laughs> All right, now I've done some quit. I'm, I'm step away from the brush. One good thing about what I've learned this year about painting is that I don't have to clean my brushes too often. I made, yeah. this, I made this dip. So when I finish, I just dip them in the, in the dip and they, they'll last for two weeks if, I don't, if I'm not even home. All right, what's the dip? dip. Is, it, is it Tostitos dip? Uh -huh. Is it Tostitos dip or no, is it um, nacho cheese? I can, I can send it to you. I, I can't <laughs> remember. You know, you use like there's some clove oil in there a little oh, bit. Oh, okay. But okay. it's mostly uh, it's linseed oil. Um, I can't remember. I, can, I, have, I have a little recipe. Yeah, cool. But it would have really works. I mean, you can dip them in there and, and they will stay wet for two weeks easily. Yeah, I'm sure it's, everyone will enjoy. And they won't dry up. And if you want to buy a prepared mix, you can actually buy it already made from Draw Mix Paint. Oh, yeah. I know Draw Carter, Mix Paint. Yeah, Carter, uh -huh. Carter guy. He has a, a big YouTube channel, too, yeah. I think. He, he sells it, but he also gives you the recipe on there. That's, so that's an easier answer. The recipe is on Draw Mix Paint, and you can buy it, you know, like a quart of it. <laughs> and I mean, that'll last five or six months, mm -hmm. easily, if not longer. All right, I'm gonna go put some of these, um, some of the darker, at least the darker leaves in. Okay. And Gary, I want you just hanging out and, and um, yeah. keeping up some conversation. Yeah, I'm just kinda rolling up my brushes while we're doing it. Yeah, cool. 
Gary is one of the best uh, <laughs> askers of questions of anyone I've ever known. So um, he, his job is relationships. And there's, there's nobody I've known that's been better at, at nurturing and cultivating relationships than Gary. So... Um, I'll send money. Yeah. <laughs> it's fun because it, it, the more you get to ask questions, the more you get to know people, the more you end up knowing yourself. Mm -hmm. yeah. Especially when somebody starts talking about something you're not interested in. Yeah. And then you go, oh, yeah. Look what kind of person I am. <laughs> yep. So it's good to not be like that. I have this little uh, acronym I use. It's called CAKE. C-A-K-E. Mm -hmm. That's for the slow people. And uh, uh, when you're in a point of tension... <coughs> you exercise curiosity. Mm. So rather than being a teller, you just start asking questions. You try to be curious, not for the sake of being curious, but for the sake of learning and understanding. And then you, you do what any of you would do all the time, show appreciation. Mm -hmm. Add kindness in your voice, body movement, all the mm. stuff that comes with, you know, being present, mm -hmm. but be kind. And then lastly, is you might end a conversation by saying, and, or you know, if you've been curious about something, you can you envelop a conversation about the issue with a statement that roughly says, um, I appreciate the past we've had together. As we work on this problem together, I look forward to what we will become. Mm. Mm. And so you envelop a conversation Envelop the issue in the conversation, in the relationship. I'll get that out in a little while. Yeah. So it's kind of helpful. Yeah, it's beautiful, Gary. Thank you. 1995. You get an 8 by 10 glossy photo of me and my family. <laughs> <laughs> Sold. Sold. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they used to say in your town. Sold American. There you go. They sell yep. Lucky Strike tobacco. Sold American. I know. You can actually still find those. It's crazy. The plant's still there in, in um, no. Durham? It's not the operational. Yeah, the, the, all the old tobacco warehouses are there. They're actually really beautiful. It would be fun yeah. to paint them. But mm -hmm. um, uh, no, the uh, Durham Tobacco Campus, as they call it now, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, is where the old Lucky Strike factory used to be back, mm -hmm. in, the mm -hmm. yeah, back in the day. Um, but it's now nah, it's been converted into like a lot of commercial space and yeah. stuff like that. That's Housing where um, and, and a radio station. And... That's where W. Is that where WKNC is? Yeah, what, yeah, I think it's WKNC. So. Yeah. Uh, lost the top to my. Oh, there it is. Well, what do you think? I love those roses. Oh my gosh. You guys oh, are you. both, seriously. Yeah, that's really beautiful. You're making some good stuff today. It's awesome. Well, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> when I used to be in, when we first started the studio, and I would come in to paint, and I'd be so intimidated. These guys were there, but they would always help me. Gary, it was always mutual, my friend. You always helped us. <laughs> yeah, there's never an opportunity where, where mm -hmm. Gary didn't help more than people helped him. Yeah. Um, one of the reasons that everyone is so generous, I think, with Gary is because he's always first far more generous <laughs> to them. Yeah. So. I think that's true for both of you. You both have yeah. just such oh, yeah. generous giving hearts well just to let everyone know evie is considered in exactly that same i boat. was thinking Aww. evie <laughs> is one of the most generous people i know yeah. 
Yeah. You know, like hands down. Yeah, you can catch it in the spirit. You always like one of the thing. One of the slogans we have, Gary, that I don't know if we had when you were here is uh, protect the other. Like oh, relationships nice. of grace yeah. is one of the ones yeah. that we always yeah. say here. But and that was from Gary Evie. That's <laughs> who taught me that phrase. And um, but another one is to protect the other. So in in that, giving yeah. and generosity to each other, we also make sure that we are aware of each other and when they're, in a way, protecting them from giving too much if, they, if we yeah. perceive that they are um, giving past their capacity mm-hmm. and that, that, uh, that goes hand in hand with mm-hmm. protecting each other. So when you're asking, making sure that they have the capacity to give is just as important. So... Uh, Evie's always so generous, yeah, but true, I always have to be careful yeah. to make sure that I'm I'm not asking too much of her because she's so no, generous. No, never. Yeah. I mean, are you kidding? You, Lewis has devoted an entire month of his time to being here with everybody, including us. Like that that you know, for everybody tuning in, but also us here in the studio, devoting his time, sharing, teaching. Um, really just out of the goodness of his heart, and we all get to benefit from that, and that's just a huge, huge gift. Mm -hmm. Um, And along that same vein, I do want to just take a moment to give a little extra shout-out to Erica, who Mm. very kindly filled in for me last week while I was sick, Um, and she painted some gorgeous flowers, um, beautiful roses last week. So if you weren't able to tune into that live stream last week, I believe that was last Wednesday or Thursday, um, it's really, really lovely. And yeah, again, big, big thank you to Erica. Yeah, check it out. It's worth it. Worth watching. <laughs> Louis, do you want to um, maybe talk a little bit about what you're thinking in regards to painting these leaves and how yeah. to kind of maintain a little bit of a, a sense of hierarchy mm-hmm. between them and the roses? Yeah, I'm... Uh, you know, I think in a way, and with roses, one of the hardest things is, or flowers in general, is making sure that there is a beautiful relationship between the leaves and the rose. They, if you're not careful, because green is just a, it can be a, such a dominant, Monster. crazy color, you have, to, you have to almost subdue it in such a way that allows for it to not shine beyond the beauty of the flower itself. Um, and it's just really easy to make that pitfall happen. So, uh, so one of the things that I always pay attention to is making sure that they have their own value relationship that's almost separate from the flowers themselves. And then I tend to mute the color of the green. That, you don't always have to do that, but you have to be really careful about how to balance it otherwise. And um, I also put a lot of warmth. Most people don't realize how much red is in green and they end up making their things far too green. So um, that is, um, I've found to be helpful. Yeah, well. looking at this mixture on your palette, it's honestly more red than green, but because of the context, um, yeah, you know, it really makes a big difference. It does, it makes a huge difference. And warm and cool stuff still plays a role, but, um, like I'm, I'm making some of these leaves cooler that are more in the light and the ones in the shadow are more warm. Um, but there's never a moment where it kind of overpowers the rest of the painting or I'm trying to prevent it from doing that. So and I like how this one connects with that flower over there. So I'm gonna bring them over and see if I can't connect those two up there at the top. a little bit of that separation as it goes down. Um, Now, really quickly, I'm going to try to put in a little bit of this um, this vase just to get some, you know, kind of have a little bit of everything in here. So I'm going to first start with this color right here and just put it in as like the highlight color. Yet again, the highlight color you can easily overpower the rest of the painting by making it far too bright. So um, going in here and kind of establishing what that color is going to be. 
and I might push it up just a little bit, but I'm keeping that sort of um, violety note. No violent. Violent, <laughs> no violent, violent violent-y notes. <laughs> um, and making the rim of it a little bit brighter than the rest of it, just a touch. So I'm gonna go in and there. And I'm widening the, the base of it just to kind of match the size of the flowers. So, and then this other side, I'm gonna keep maybe slightly cooler, but less bright in value. Now the best way, in my opinion, to paint a vase is to add a lot of the background color um, to it as well. Once you've kind of added the reflected lights into it, you'd be amazed at how harmonious a piece can be if you just let the background speak to the vase. So you can go in here and create a little more background color. Yeah, I think that's one of the really uh, common things that people struggle with in painting uh, glass and glass vessels is, um, you know, this differentiation between like painting the surface of the glass and trying to catch that form versus focusing on everything surrounding it and how actually that reflection creates form. Mm -hmm. um, and striking a balance in between the two can be really challenging for a lot of folks, I think. Myself included, I think is challenging. Just gonna go in do that and I'll re-establish those edges. Okay, and then I'm just gonna make a little bit of a mark here on the right that is a representation of the vase. And then I'm gonna kind of create a little bit of where, actually I need to put a little bit of warmth in here to represent some of that floor kind of coming through Top of the space there. Emily says, I saw the email today about the studio sale. Exciting. Will most of the paintings created this month be in the sale? Can you give me a price point to keep in mind? I need to know how many drawings to sell so I can collect from you artists I admire. <gasps> oh, that's so sweet of you. Yes, um, we're going to have them at all price points. I mean, my little my littlest studies might go for like forty dollars, all the way to like some of the bigger pieces might be like close to five six hundred dollars. But I'm trying to keep it incredibly affordable. That's that's cheaper than anything I sell normally in my work, um, just because I want to um, I want people to be able to have something. Um, that they can start uh, their own established collections. And, um, but there'll be price points that kind of run the gamut. And the only difference would be that you have, um, you'll have uh, shipping that will be playing a bit of a part as well. <laughs> well, you know, you might have that microphone, so your whisper is going to be everyone's secret. <laughs> well, we would be honored to, to have that a part of the studio sale. Okay. If you'd like. So, uh, absolutely. And then we're going to put in just a little bit of um, context of the stems in here. Emily says, that's incredible and so generous. Yay. Yay. Thank you, Emily. That's really sweet. Well, Emily, I hope, I hope we get to see you soon. I need what you did to Emily come, say? Come in and say hi to everybody. They didn't she hear me, she said they? that she was excited. They didn't hear what I said, then. Oh, they prob probably did. Oh, that was not good. <laughs> it, it absolutely is good. You're most certainly being very generous with your... With your um, work. 
and your time and knowledge. Absolutely. It's all appreciated. So Gary needs to ask like some more questions similar to what he was asking at, lunch, at lunchtime today. Oh yeah, he had some really, really great questions that made us all think pretty deeply. What was that? <laughs> you must be signing your work. I was, I was just signing the work <laughs> since I decided I was going to donate it. I might have better sign it. Yeah, at lunchtime, Gary was asking us all about, um, you know, our hopes and dreams. And, Why don't you tell uh, me what we did? <laughs> what questions did you hear? Uh, well, you were asking about our dreams for the future and um, if, uh, you know, there was one thing that most people don't know about you. What's a fun fact that most people don't know about you? And, um, yeah, just very, very sweet, deep, meaningful questions, getting to know one another. It's definitely appreciated. Mm -hmm. Well, I think I asked you... Uh, <clears throat> Tell me something about your background, your heritage that shaped who you are. Oh, I don't know if you asked me. I know you asked Tina that. Um, mm. I think in my case, um, I actually have, well, I don't know if everybody needs to hear this. But <laughs> 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 um, I am inspired by my ancestry. Um, I am Scottish from the Scottish McIntyre clan. And... Mm -hmm. um, before I went to do painting full time, I was actually a weaver and a textile designer. Oh. And a lot of my Scottish ancestors were weavers. Mm -hmm. um, and that really inspired me a lot creatively and still does in the studio. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. <laughs> a weaver. What, a, what an earthy kind of thing to do. Oh, I, yes. Very I love, much. I love that idea. <laughs> yeah. And just each line, I'm not even using a fulcrum or anything. I'm, I'm just putting down far away. So you can totally do that when you're working on your pieces. You can still be pretty far and be able to make a good, strong mm -hmm. edge. Joyce says, looking great. And Sean Kelly says, spectacular work all. Some beauty definitely went down today. Oh, well, and beauty rehumanizes the soul. There you go. Ooh, yeah. all the truth bombs. Yeah, so you hang out with Gary long enough, you'll realize that he's nothing but truth bombs. <laughs> <laughs> That's silly. Well, it came out a little better than I thought, but um. But I see a big mistake. But. Oh, it's beautiful, Gary. Yeah. It's yeah. A big mistake. Well, I have to put it up on the Discord. Yeah. Can you, wait, if you take a picture, could you send it to me? Absolutely. All right. Because if I take a picture, it'll be all wrong. <laughs> <laughs> <I know. laughs> my picture taking skills. My gallery keeps saying, can't you just send us a decent picture? I said, y'all have a camera. <laughs> <laughs> You know how you want it done. Hey, photographing work can be pretty tough. I it can so. be. It absolutely can be. I mean, you've got to be set up for it. And I'm really, I don't know, yeah, I'm not particularly set Although my lighting in my studio is exactly like, uh, well, not exactly like, but it's, uh, it was, it was Lewis taught me how to do it. And the only thing wrong with it is, every time my wife walks in, she says, it's nice except for you have opaque shower curtains hanging <laughs> in the room that people see when they first come into our home. <laughs> <She's> oh. Just... <laughs> That's she's... great. Honestly, though, they work so well. Yeah. She's... They really do. She's not overwhelmed by the, that, that particular... Um... <laughs> it's a decor choice. It's yeah, okay. Right. It's valid. Denise asks, can you speak more about tomorrow's video challenge? Um, yeah. Louis, I can take that if you need Do to it. focus yeah. for a second. That'd be great. Um, so tomorrow, 
Ooh, tomorrow. Yeah, I'm gonna be, sorry. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> oh, it's the end of a day. She's been doing that whiskey <laughs> thing. <Hey, yep>. <laughs> <laughs> um, tomorrow, I'm going to be painting with Lewis, um, which is going to be a ton of fun. Uh, we're going to be painting together uh, with kind of the thesis statement of focusing on leaving our brush strokes alone. So having a lot of confidence in our mark making um, and also really kind of going through this process of mixing, putting a paintbrush stroke down, stepping back and then mixing again and not, you know, finessing or being too finicky with our mark making. Um, so that's going to be a lot of fun. And I hope everybody can tune in. We're really looking forward to it. All right, I'm going to just put in a little bit of shadow here in the back just to kind of add a bit more fun warmth and maybe balance as well. James says, I can see a big difference between my still life from a week ago and what I got down today. Yes. Working from two feet away gives a different vibe. That's awesome. That makes me so happy. That's a great, great comment. It's a good one to own. Because you can, it's so easy to get a little stool and instead of putting it between you and the painting, it's easy to sit on it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Take a little nap while you're painting, you know. Yeah, I love it. I have to sometimes, I actually have to stand only on my right leg because I hyperextended my knee this summer. No, so really? So some days, my knee will just like kill me. Aww. And I, and I, Jay will come in and she said, why are you standing on one leg? I said, my knee hurts. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know many of us here are big proponents of taking stretch breaks when yes. needed. I need to do more of that, yeah. I certainly have to take some stretch breaks. I actually have a yoga mat uh, that I keep tucked away in the corner of my studio. <laughs> well, I went to the gym this morning, lifted weights before I came, so I, had, I did my stretching before I got here. But Wow, good but, for yeah, you. Yeah, look at him. I huh? need to do it now. <laughs> Superman over well, here. Well, we can video you doing that while no, I'm that would be not. <laughs> that would be really, really be exciting, wouldn't it? <laughs> I'm just sitting here looking at those roses and thinking how pretty they are. Oh, oh beautiful. How does somebody possibly do that? You know, it's just like, doesn't even seem possible. It's just what he does when he has fun. <laughs> Lewis. It's not just girls that just want to have fun. <laughs> <laughs> girls and Lewis. <laughs> yes, and Lewis, which is the theme of the entire East Oaks group. Let you us know, have fun. Because... <laughs> Um, I have, I'm surrounded by some really awesome, strong, powerful women. Mm -hmm. And it is, it gets, gets to be a pleasure that I get to be with them every day. Well, that certainly goes both ways. Let's see. You always make sure you're putting in a little bit of shadow. You got to make sure this, this, um, this vase is sitting on something. I wrote a poem about women. So I, I'm going to I'll give it. I'll give it to you. It I'm, I'm curious where this is going, Gary. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's really funny because the way it sounds. <laughs> can't wait to hear it. Here it comes, coming up. Poems about women. Come on, open up. Okay. <clears throat> There's two poems that run consecutively. <clears throat> the first one is called, called Hot Water. <laughs> so it has, a, it has a, uh, a dialect in it, so you have to he listen to the dialect because the dialect communicates. Okay. <clears throat> buy all the water, get ready. Take the baby by the head. Feet came first. Take no need for water hot. Mama, won't you take a cup of tea? Child, just go on, leave me be. K 
can't say if and I'll drink hot again. Mm. And then the second one, wild women, women sick and healed, married and single, walking, quiet, hidden from sight, lost in crowds like so many seeds, hearts ablaze, oh, coins rattle as they come, planting the kingdom, the beauty of women prepared the way. Mm. Mm. Good point. That's beautiful, Gary. Wow. I like writing poetry. Yeah, I can <laughs> tell. Yeah. I feel yeah, like that's, that's like a, more of a new thing. I don't remember hearing any of your poetry. I never, I don't think I ever shared much of it. I just uh, didn't, I. Yeah. Gary, do you find oh. that writing like impacts your painting practice? Oh my gosh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. It just sets your mind in a different frame. You know, you're, it's get you out of yourself. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, that's more than more probably what it does get you out of yourself. Mm. And I have three daughters whom I uh, adore. So I think about my daughters a lot when I write poetry. Mm. A lot of times it's just written for things that I I know they're doing or going through, and I'll write poems about that that are nobody would know that they're about them other than me. But but it's still their stories kind of inform me. That's beautiful. Yeah, it's beautiful. Mm. Mm-hmm. I, I probably got started more thinking about my paint, my poetry, because of Lewis. Interestingly enough. Really? Yeah, I hadn't thought about it until just now. But I, I, I remember a couple of years ago you started talking about painting with poetry or yeah. something, and mm-hmm. I thought that's weird. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's funny because now that I've said that, I feel like I see it everywhere. Yeah. You uh-huh. know that yeah. um, that every what the portraits that I do, I I not just trying to merely make a portrait. I'm trying to make a piece of poetry in which they are the lead role. Mm -hmm. Um, In every piece, I try to think about how I can make this a poetic painting. And Evie, actually, she, you write some poetry, don't you? I do. Um, I actually, I use, well, unfortunately, I used to write far more regularly than I do right now. Mm -hmm. Um, I used to write every day. And when I was in college, I actually wrote and illustrated my own book of poetry that got published in a uh, zine. Um, nice. You know, a small publication, but, it, you know, yeah. it was hey. kind of cool. Yeah. yeah. It's cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's cool. Um, it was like, gosh, I'm trying to remember. I wrote, like, four sonnets, a bunch of sinkanes, which are similar to haikus, but in groups of five. Um, I wrote a villanelle, which was a doozy. Um trying to remember yeah just a whole mm-hmm. whole bunch some mm-hmm. free verse yeah yeah that'd probably be me i just i tell a story <laughs> i love that i think you know as artists and as creatives in general so much of what we do is storytelling and mm-hmm. you know whether it's a paintbrush mm-hmm. or a guitar or a pen whatever your tools of attack are tell that story I think it's beautiful yeah yeah but y'all we're near the end of another fabulous day. I want to thank Gary for being so bold as to come and, and, and <laughs> enjoy being a part of our community uh, and uh, well, adding to uh, wonderful truth bombs and a beautiful painting. And like always, everyone, we're, we deeply appreciate everything, all the help and support that you give us. Um, we are, you know, we exists because of you and the patrons who uh, support East Oak Studio and, uh, you know, on our subscription platform. But we want to also make things free for y'all, and that's what this is, in order for people who can't afford to be patrons to be able to have access to all of this as well. But thank you for that. And if you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe and hit the bell so you know for the next one. Tomorrow is going to be an amazing day. We have a cool little subject matter that we're going to work on. And uh, just remember, it's all about making a single mark, mixing your colors, and then making another single mark. And we really look forward to that. Thank you so much to Evie for creating an excellent conversation behind. I'm so glad that she's feeling better this week. And looking forward to uh, another fun day of conversation because Evie will be joining me. So uh, thank you again, Gary. And everyone, happy painting until tomorrow. Happy painting, everybody. Bye. Thank you.